Welcome to late afternoon football here today on Fox. The Giants take the field, and it's a battle in the NFC East. The Dallas Cowboys at one and seven. The New York Giants six and two. And now, welcome to the broadcast with everybody. I'm Joe Troy and Pam. Coming up, it's a study in opposites, no doubt. One team just fired their head coach. The other team, the Giants, they have won five straight. They have the number one defense in the NFL. They can run it. They can throw it. Eli Manning's playing at a new level, even though he's a Super Bowl champion quarterback. And here's one to my left, Troy Aikman. And uh, good luck, Dallas Cowboys. And good luck, Jason Garrett, one in seven and on the road with a backup quarterback today. Yeah, I don't know what to, spe to expect, and I'm not sure they know what to expect. You're talking about Jason Garrett taking over a one in seven locker room, trying to change the culture in what virtually is three days not easy to do what I do know is this as someone who has known Jason Garrett as long as I have he's been preparing for this moment since he was still playing in the National Football League he'll be ready the question is will his team be ready we are about to find out the answer to that question here in a moment we go down to the field for more on the field on the Dallas sideline here's Pam Oliver well that's right Joe the Cowboys team meeting this morning Jason Garrett delivered a very inspirational and methodical speech to the team Terrence Newman said that the Cowboys are completely re-energized Garrett's methods has certainly gotten the team's attention in fact one player told me they'd be very surprised if the team came out and laid another egg back to you well they have laid seven of them for the most part one and seven and so Wade Phillips is gone and Jason Garrett is in and here are the starting points new energy they better find some quick and for the Giants offensively they can do it all and defensively trying to control Des Bryant who is the rookie and the playmaker now for the Dallas Cowboys. We welcome in a new audience as Beeler kicks it away. Giants will start with a football, and it's Will Blackman. Second week active for the Giants with the return, and Blackman crossed the 20, got to the 21, and that's it. If you're just joining us, the storyline pretty simple. You've got the Giants, who are 6 and 2, that won five straight, taking on the Dallas Cowboys, 1 and 7. They fired their head coach, Wade Phillips, on Monday, and now Jason Garrett takes over, and Troy, here's the question mark. And what has always been a constant for the Giants, the offensive line, they've had to reshuffle it again. Well, they have, and I think you look back to last week against the Seattle Seahawks and the decision to put Sean Andrews in at left tackle and Rich Seibert at the center position, all of those things helping them out as they come into this game against Dallas. Start with a throw, and it's Manningham on the edge, and a good play is made by Terrence Newman, a loss of two. And so now we look at this defense which Troy has been getting shredded they play the three four and they want to take some of the pressure off their cornerbacks who have been getting beaten a lot. Well they have especially here over the last three games new defensive coordinator Paul Pascaloni talking with him yesterday he said we've exposed our corners too often in man coverage we have got to allow them to take some breaks from time to time expect some safety help over the top more than they have seen in recent weeks. Just got it away on second down and 12. Manning throws and the pass caught by Hakeem Nix. 21 yards, Newman on the coverage and a first down for the Giants. Well, they don't give Newman any help here. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Nick's against Newman in the back shoulder fade that we see Eli Manning throw so effectively, and it's especially good to Akeem Nix. He's a big physical receiver, and you see Terrence Newman now hobbling off. But Akeem Nix is a mismatch on that type of throw because he's such a big body guy. Now it's Scandrick in the lineup replacing Terrence Newman. First down, Giants, a toss to Bradshaw. To his left, and Bradshaw got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. The Giants are playing without Steve Smith, who was one of the better slot receivers in the NFL. That's a big weapon not there for Eli Manning. He's got a partially torn pec, and that means that Rams's Barton will have to step up. But the numbers for Eli Manning, he's been getting better and better as this season's gone on. Well, and he's been absolutely on fire here over the last three weeks. Good numbers for the entire season but just the last three weeks alone nine touchdown passes to only three interceptions on second down passes out of the reach of Manningham 
And a third and long coming up. Yeah, just a miscommunication there with Mario Manningham and Eli Manning. And you talked about it a moment ago, Joe, with, with Steve Smith out of the lineup. You know, the Cowboys have got to be pretty happy about that because Steve Smith has been a Cowboy killer since he came into the league. He's put up big numbers, over 100 yards receiving in the first matchup, and he's worked the middle of the field very well against this Cowboys secondary. Smith with 25 catches in his last three games against Dallas. Third and ten. And there was movement prior to the snap. It'll be third and 15. Full start. Number 84. Offense. Five yard penalty. Down. They get Duke Calhoun who's a rookie and Stands to reason he'll get more action with Steve Smith not available. They take Calhoun out. That won't make Tom Coughlin happy. And right now, this is a team that's playing with five receivers with Smith out. Yeah, and I halfway expected to see more two tight end packages potentially, but Tom Coughlin said, no, we're going to run our offense. We're going to run with three wide receivers, even though we're going to be depending on some younger players in that slot position. Terrence Newman still out defensively for Dallas. Pass underneath the boss. He's got a long way to go. And it'll be fourth down. First guy there was Scandrick, a gain of eight. And for Dallas's defense, they gave up the one first down and now shut it down as the punter, Matt Dodge, will come on for New York. Well, and Dallas has got to feel pretty good about that possession right there. I mean, for a defense that has just been shredded here over the last several weeks to come out against an offense that has been playing as well as the New York Giants have been and to just give up the one first down awfully impressive. Dodge hits it it's a beauty over the head of Bryant and it will head into the end zone Looked like it was going to check up but now Dallas with their new head coach will start at the 20 no score. And flu. The game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Terrence Newman getting worked on on the sideline as they take a look at his left ankle. Hurt in the opening series, and now it's Dallas with Kitna quarterback. Out of the backfield, it's Felix Jones. Room to run, and a good start for the Dallas offense. First play and a first down. Bullock on the stop. Take a look at this offense with the rotation they have at running back. Troy, this is simply a team that has not proven that they can run the ball at all. No, and I think there was some speculation coming into this game that they would try to pound the New York Giants, and they and they still certainly could, but they open up the first play of the game with a swing pass to Felix Jones. There's Kitna who's taken over for Tony Romo, who was knocked out. By Michael Bowley and the Giants defense three weeks ago. Handoff is to Barber. He's easy to spot, and Marion Barber picks up two. And Trill Roll made the stop, and that's kind of the key in Detroit with this defense for the Giants. When you say roll, you think about these three safeties, and they've got a nice mix going. Well, I like Antrell Roll. You're talking about a guy who I believe was the eighth overall pick when he came into the league for the Arizona Cardinals as a cover corner. He made the transition three week, or three years ago to safety, and now here he is, one of the most physical players for this New York Giants defense, leading the team in tackles. Second down and eight. Handoff to Barber. Hits the hole hard, carries a tackler with him. That was Goff and a gain of five. Phillips, one of the other safeties, up to make the initial hit. There's Jonathan Goff, who is taken over in the middle. Antonio Pierce is gone, and Goff has stepped in, and that's kick Bullock to the outside. Third and three. Good support for the Giants and Barber leaps. They're going to give him a spot short of the first down. Marion Barber did all he could. But the head linesman is going to mark him down about a yard shy of a first down. Well and this could be head coach Jason Garrett's first major decision to make whether or not he wants to challenge this. 
You know coming into this game you think back to the last time these two teams met Dallas was 0 for 10 on third down. And now they're 0 for 11 because there's not going to be a challenge. This is the top third down defense in the NFL and Garrett will not challenge the play. McBriar hits it. Good high hanging punt. Blackman will let it go past him and into the end zone. So now the Giants have it at the 20. No score early in Jersey. It's time. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Let's go back and take a look at the end of that Marion Barber carry when he tried to leap for the first down. Yeah, Joe, and I think that had Marion Barber have had the ball in his left arm, you know, he might have been able to challenge that and pick up that first down. But because it was in his right arm, it's where it crosses the sideline as to where then the ball is spotted. Manning with a good pocket in front of him steps up and throws completes to Nix. Working on Mike Jenkins. Michael Jenkins who has had an interesting week after pulling up on a tackle last week at Green Bay. Well Eli Manning he gets this kind of protection throughout this game. It's going to be a long afternoon for this defensive secondary for the Dallas Cowboys because for the second week in a row. You know Eli Manning has plenty of time in the pocket. We had the game last week in Seattle Joe. I'm not sure Eli Manning got touched one time and he shredded them. And again this is a different look to the offensive line for the Giants as Bradshaw carries it and Ahmad takes it to the 45 picked up two. How about when we visited with Ahmad Bradshaw the other day and you know for those that don't really get a chance to see Ahmad Bradshaw not a very big individual in fact very small by any standard and you know, I was asking him how his body was feeling because he's the featured guy this year he's getting more carries than he's really had at any point in his career and he said he's sore right up until game time and it's not until the adrenaline kicks in that he really forgets about the soreness and just goes out and plays now this guy's a he's as tough as they come it's second and eight. Play action to Bradshaw. And a pass is fired to Nix for a first down. Eli shows his fastball and completes it for 14 yards. Well, and this is what I was talking about with Hakeem Nix because he doesn't typically get a lot of separation, but when he's challenged, you see that's good coverage right there by Orlando Skandrick. But Hakeem Nix is very physical at the point of the catch. Kevin Booth is down. Training staff taking a look at him. He was just activated. We'll take a break. Could Windows Phone. It's time for a phone to save the smartphones by Avatar Extended Collector's Edition on Blu ray and DVD Tuesday. And by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Kevin Booth, who tore his pack lifting weights during the spring and was just activated off the physically unable to perform list, is he got up and walked off. Didn't look like he was in bad shape. But Mitch Petrus takes over at guard as the depth of this offensive line continues to get tested. Here's Bradshaw. Sneaks his way for five yards behind all those big bodies. And that injury to Kevin Booth, even though this is his first action and he just came off the PUP list a few mm -hmm. weeks ago, you know, putting Mitch Petras in, the reason they didn't do that to start the game was because of Sean Andrews starting at left tackle. He's he's playing a new position. They didn't want to then put another young guy next to him, and they thought there'd be more stability with more of a veteran player in Kevin Booth, but now they're back to where they are that they were trying to avoid at the start of the week. Bradshaw. Takes it down inside the 35, picks up three. Give you a look at all of the inactives, and for the Giants, two big pieces are not there. There's Sean O'Hara, who was out with a mild Liz Frank sprain in his right foot. He missed three games earlier with a sprained left ankle. Dave Deal, who had 127 consecutive starts right there coming into today, that streak is over. And they don't know when he's coming back. He's got a partially torn hamstring. Third and two. Both Jacobs and Bradshaw in the backfield, and Bradshaw gets it. Good toss from Manning, and Ahmad Bradshaw is down to the 22. A gain of 11 on third and two. 
Well, that was a design screen. You know, they're just going to swing out of Mod Bradshaw. They got right guard Chris Snee, and then the center, Rich Seibert, that get out in front. And once you get all the defensive players in overflowing, you're able to get Ahmad Bradshaw on the cutback. And good job here of Ahmad Bradshaw protecting the football. He's had a he's had a problem this year and in other years hanging on to the ball and, and visiting with him. I asked him if Tom Coughlin ever has anything to say to him when he comes off after a fumble. And to my surprise, he said no, he never does. Coughlin just says other people go yell at him. Here's Manningham making the catch. Stays on his feet. And he will end up losing yardage on the play. McCann made the tackle, a loss of five, and here's a game break with Kurt Menefee. Well, the New York Jets are in overtime for the second straight week, this time at Cleveland after missing a field goal attempt. This is basically a glorified punt. It's an interception thrown by Mark Sanchez. Bottom line, a minute and a half to go. Cleveland with the ball inside their own 10, trying to avoid the first time in the NFL in two years. Joe Troy Pan. Donovan McNabb is watching that game in preparation for his action later against Philadelphia. Can have a tie in the NFL. You know, he's had a tough enough go in the last oh, couple of whatever. Games. Here's Bradshaw taking it down to the 25, maybe inches inside a gain of three. How about the last five games for Tom Coughlin's crew, and I think it's to his credit. You know, they played a, an undermanned Seattle team last week. He has the ability. Of keeping his team up and whatever the message is every week it's delivered these guys get it and they carry out their plan. I think what Tom Coughlin has been doing in New York for the last several years is essentially what Jason Garrett tried to do this week in Dallas and make people accountable and let them understand that hey these are the ways that we are going to do things and every time these players walk into the building they know what to expect from their head coach. They're down in 12 end zone. Jenkins incomplete. Mike Jenkins almost came away with his second pick of the year. He's just not able to get that foot down. Probably would be a good week for Michael Jenkins to show up and have a big game. Why does he's got Troy... possession there and then he gets his left foot down, but the right one's out of bounds. Why does Troy say that? Well, Mike Jenkins last week, by his own admission, gave up on a play, pulled away from a hit on James Jones in the third quarter in that blowout loss at Green Bay. We were here a couple of years ago when as a rookie he pulled off a tackle. Times delivers the first points of the day. 43 yards and the Giants strike first. Three nothing New York. There's the scoring drive as Lawrence Times caps it with the field goal. Eli Manning Kevin Gilbride the offensive coordinator looking at the pictures on the sideline and now. Cowboys will get it again. First week under new head coach Jason Garrett. First week under new defensive coordinator Paul Pasqualoni. And Tynes kicks it off. McCann on the return. Former star at SMU. He's given a lift to the kick return unit for the Cowboys. That one good for 21. Here comes Kidna. With the Cowboys down three. There are some of the numbers for Jason Garrett, who was a backup quarterback with the Dallas Cowboys from 93 to 99. For the guy to my right, Troy Aikman, then was here with the Giants 2000 through 2003. After coaching with the Dolphins, it's been the Giants, rather, the Dallas offensive coordinator since 07. And now he takes over for Wade Phillips fired on Monday. On first down, a throw over the middle, Felix Jones. First down, Dallas. 13 yards, golf on the stop for the Giants. Ernie Acorsi, the former general manager who was here while Jason played for the Giants for four years, said this week that Jason Garrett could have gone on to be anything that he wanted to be. And I couldn't agree more. In fact, I think he could run for president if he had wanted to. I mean, he's that type of individual. And I'm not so sure that president might not be an easier job. At least you get four years. I mean, he's only getting eight weeks on this job, right? <laughs> First down, Dallas. Kedna, deep, in stride, and now a catch and a tumble by Des Bryant. 
And the first real big play of this game, it belongs to the rookie Des Bryant, 45 yards. Well, you're going to see Des Bryant inside release, but then he gets back out towards the sideline. John Kidna does a good job of laying it out and giving Des Bryant an opportunity to go get that ball. We talked to Perry Fuel, the defensive coordinator, and he said the one guy that we have to control is Des Bryant. He was scared to death of him probably because in that game in Dallas, Des Bryant was the only reason that game was even close. Felix Jones a tailback for the end zone and there he is again Des Bryant incomplete and Bryant wants the sideline to challenge it there was a juggle a near catch and let's take a look what an effort Boy, seen so anything there to say incomplete let's see. Yeah, I, you know, I think the fact that they ruled it an incompletion is why it probably won't be overturned. It looked to me like he probably did get his right forearm under the ball, but I don't think there's enough there to overturn it. But Jason Garrett's going to find out. Garrett shows off his throwing arm. Longtime backup who was six and three. Dallas challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. Garrett, it was six and three, replacing Aikman as a starter with the Cowboys. Ryan looked like he had the arm under it to me. We'll get the call when we come back. Jason Garrett smiling on the right. He may be one for one, challenging a call in the NFL as a head coach. It looks like Ryan has his right arm under the ball and the tip of the ball never does come down on the ground and he secures the catch. Well and there's no question that Des Bryant felt that he had caught it by the way he got up after he saw that it was ruled incomplete. Des Bryant's pleading with Garrett to throw the flag he did and we're just waiting on the call from Bill Levy. And how about Des Bryant. I mean this guy has had one heck of a rookie season. I mean just amazing player. I mean when you look at the Cowboys and some of the poor performances that have taken place by individuals he's been the one constant he shows up each and every week whether it's in the special teams returns he's had a couple of punts already returned for touchdowns one of which was against the Giants in their first meeting and he plays hard each and every week. It would be his seventh touchdown overall fifth touchdown catch. The previous play was a career long 45 yard reception for Des Bryant and there is the wide eyed Jason Garrett who throws his first challenge flag. You know that he does still have it. You see the delivery there and he he held it. <laughs> you, you mentioned earlier about Jason smiling. You will see Jason Garrett smile a lot. That's kind of what he does. Here it is. After reviewing the play the receiver had control in the air. When he hit the ground he maintained control. It is a touchdown. And Jason Garrett has watched his offense take it down the field and score a touchdown for Des Bryant. Touchdown reception number five, and he gets better by the week. And Troy, as you said, I mean, he was the one guy that showed up last week at Green Bay with a career high nine catches, a career high 86 yards, and the number one threat to this Giants defense as Beeler misses the extra point. Garrett's not smiling now as a point is left out there. Cofield got some push in the middle. Did he get a piece of it or was it just a straight miss. No oh, there was a hand that got on it Joe. Right there yep. Cofield. So Barry Cofield. Ticked it on its way past the line of scrimmage and it's a 6 3 game. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. In overtime against Cleveland, the Jets get the ball back with 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Mark Sanchez hooks up with Santonio Holmes for the game winner. Jets win an OT for the second week in a row, this time at Cleveland, 26 to 20 to five. Joe Troy Pair. So Rex beats Rob as the Twins 
match wits in Cleveland and a win for the Jets on the road and Des Bryant has given the Dallas Cowboys a lead it's worth going back and talking about Garrett because Garrett is a guy who passed on opportunities in 08 with Atlanta with Baltimore he came very close to getting the Rams head coaching job that eventually went to Steve Spagnuolo now he's in a position where he gets a chance but the deck is really stacked against him. On the return, Blackman. Across the 25. And as we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, I think that's that's really the, the situation that Garrett's in. Yeah, you get your chance to be the head coach, but now what do you do with it? And if it doesn't go well, how far does it set you back? Well, and I had wondered if even Jason Garrett had a choice in this matter. He said there was no choice, at least on his part. He was taking this job. It's a job that, you know, he's obviously thrilled to have, and he's going to make the best of it. Things changed this week in Dallas. He put him in full pads on Wednesday. He texted the players told them that they were going to be at a team meeting early he locked the door down right when the meeting started and a lot of things changed from what they had been in previous weeks. Here's Brandon Jacobs his first carry a gain of two Brady James on the stop. You know it was talked about on the pregame show and I, I guess a lot of the things that Jason Garrett implemented this week in Dallas you kind of scratch your head and you say well why weren't they doing those things before you mean you have to show up on time to meetings you mean you have to hustle from one drill to the next I mean it was more of an indictment on the way things were being done as opposed to how they're going to be done moving forward it's second down and eight for the Giants who trail by three and who lead the NFC East on a five game win streak Manning throws sideline Manningham and it's over his head. Scandrick out there on coverage. It looks like the Cowboys have lost Terrence Newman. He is in the locker room getting x rays on his left ankle. They're already thin at that position. They have three active corners. That's the rookie, McCann. Yeah, thin in the secondary now to go along with being awfully thin along that defensive front. Marcus Spears put on IR with a torn left cap. Hatcher. Is inactive. Lissamore is out with a high ankle sprain. It's third down and eight. Manning throws Kevin Moss. And Moss is forced down of bounds short of the first down by Brady James. Yeah, and that's what we've seen now the last couple of times on third down for the New York Giants. They haven't been able to get the ball down the field. They've been in third and long, which has been the biggest problem. Because they haven't been very good on first and second downs, they've had to come underneath the Kevin Boss, and in both times the Cowboys have come up and put hits on him before he's able to get the yardage. Dallas Cowboys are showing life here early, and if they quit last week at Green Bay or quit the week before, they've come here to play. Awful punt by Dodge. Matt Dodge hit it off the side of his foot. I think a part of that Joe is he's so worried about kicking the ball to Des Bryant that he's trying to change it up a little bit and you know that can pose some problems for a young punter. Just a 31 yard punt by Dodge stats haven't been bad for Matt Dodge. Problem is he's had a tough time catching snaps and this time. He hit it. Off the instep the inside of his right foot it was just a 31 yard punt so good field position for Dallas up by three. Toss to Miles Austin coming underneath and well played. Antrell roll. No game. It's really a nice job by Antrell roll. I was talking about him earlier in this game leading the team in tackles and, and he fills that gap very well. He stayed home didn't buy into the play action in the backfield and came up and made a nice play in the open field on Miles Austin. Antrell roll was very critical of his teammates after a 38 14 loss at Indianapolis It carried over the next week a 29 10 loss at home against Tennessee. He questioned the effort. His team has picked it up and now they've won five straight. Here's Felix Jones. Big run. Felix Jones has a first down for Dallas. Picked up 12. Terrell Thomas on the stop. And Tuck is slow to get up. Next week, Fox NFL Sunday, Packers, Vikings. 
Redskins Titans Lions Cowboys or Cardinals Chiefs. Late game is the Seahawks and Saints. The Falcons and Rams Bucks and 49ers. It's all next week starting at 1 Eastern 10 a.m. Pacific. Under a minute to go opening quarter here in the New Meadowlands Stadium and on first down Miles Austin what a throw from Kitna and Austin is down inside the 10 first and goal 44 yards from John Kitna well you're going to see the inside release here by Witten that ties up the safety here and so it's one on one on the outside and you're going to see the open field there down the middle. And just a perfectly thrown ball there by John Kitna. The Cowboys, if they wish, could let the clock expire on the first quarter, but they're going to run another play. First and goal. That's that route combination against the coverage that the Giants were running, and it worked beautifully. Handoff to Felix Jones, who's going to be marked down short of the end zone. His knee was down, and they're going to mark him near the one. And it will be second and goal from the one when we start the second quarter. 6 3 Dallas after one. The NFL on Fox will continue after this from your local Fox station. Well, before we came to Lowe's, we tried another paint to cover our striped living room walls. Uh, we were told it would cover easily. Slight exaggeration. Huge exaggeration. Thankfully, Samantha here told us about high def color. I just told them about our new high def. Dallas on top and they have a second and goal at the one it was the forearm of Felix Jones that was down before he stretched out and crossed into the end zone Barber in the backfield they don't give it to him Kitna looking for help throws and the pass is caught for the touchdown by Gronkowski and we'll need another look at this as the initial ruling is touchdown Dallas. Well, it's just Gronkowski keeping a play alive, and then John Kidna throwing it to him. You see that he had, had caught it, but the ball did hit the ground. And I'm not yes. so sure that that's a touchdown. I agree. That ball moved. Yeah, it's almost simultaneous at the time that he's making the catch and the ball then hitting the ground. And yeah, I agree, Joe. It looks to me like that's what allowed him then to secure the ball and, and a good call there by the officials correcting him. So one official came in and overruled, and while the Dallas offense left the field, now they're back on, so no challenge necessary. They corrected on the field, and it's third and goal from the one. It's Des Bryant at the top. Kidna falls down. And Kidna and Barber have had a couple of issues with goal to go near the end zone. A loss of three. Yeah, well, you're going to see right here. Watch the right foot of John Kitna. He gets stepped on by Andre Girard. And the Cowboys, a couple of games ago, had problems down here with something very similar when Kitna ran in to the tail back this time he's not even even able to come back and make the handoff you know that happens a lot of times for quarterbacks you got to be real careful as to how close you get your feet underneath those linemen because they can take a step back and step on you the way he did just getting it inside the right upright 22 yard field goal by Beeler Beeler 9 3 this is sponsored by Sprint the now network by GMC, the official vehicle of the NFL. And by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. Tough to tell so far which team's on the five game winning streak and which team has lost five in a row and just fired their head coach. The Cowboys have come out ready to play. They lead by six thanks to a missed extra point. Beeler will kick it away. Well, that was a big stop. By the Giants keeping Dallas out of the end zone and only giving up a field goal. So Blackman waits for it. And this one is headed out of bounds. So Baylor's finally getting a chance to kick field goals. He was the kickoff specialist last year. And Joe DiCamillis 
who's the special teams coordinator for Dallas can't like that. Earlier today in the stadium parking lot was the taste of the NFL battle of the gridiron grillers. The competition featured chefs from the New York and Dallas Fort Worth areas. Proceeds benefit kicking hunger in America. It's the 20th anniversary and they've raised over $10 million. If you want more information, go to www.tasteofthenfl.com. Yeah, Ken Rathbun, he brought a smorgasbord of food up here for us at halftime, including rattlesnake something. Yeah, I've not had that before. Rattlesnake sausage, that's what it is. Here's Bradshaw. Hit early, got around that hit in game three. You know, I think that looking at the New York Giants offensively this year and the job that Kevin Gilbride has done, and really not just this year, but ever since he took over as offensive coordinator, and he's obviously got a lot of weapons as we've got a yellow flag being thrown here on the field. And it was just thrown. Be too many guys in the huddle. I don't think it's left over from the previous play. No, they threw it late after everybody was going back to the huddle. And they're asking Garrett whether he wants to accept it or not. It's against the Giants. Illegal formation. Number 65 was on the end of the line and did not report as eligible. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. So that's a problem. It was on the previous play. And now Tom Coughlin's hot. But I guess the officials got together and asked one another, hey, did 65 report? And the answer was no. Yeah, well, Tom Coughlin, he's yelling at the officials. He's not yelling at the Giants huddle. And he's it's obvious to him that that he did in fact report. That's Will Beatty who broke his foot early in the year. And the Giants for a while contemplated putting Beatty on IR. They kept him on the roster and cut Brian Keel, who's now a starting linebacker for St. Louis. They're going to need some of that depth on the offensive line. It's first and 15 now, and Bradshaw drops it. Mont Bradshaw, who's number three in the NFC with over 900 yards from scrimmage, had it drop right into his stomach, and then he put it on the ground second and 15. Yeah they've just come out of the gates awfully slow in this game offensively because they've been a juggernaut offensively throughout this season. Think back to last week Joe they fumbled the first possession and then they went off and rattled five straight touchdowns and 30 first downs in that game against Seattle. Now Seattle doesn't have the talent that Dallas has but they have not come into this game playing real efficiently. Here's Bradshaw. Good play made on the edge by Spencer and Bradshaw turned it into something positive game four. Yeah we've seen him now the last few times he's had the ball he's he's had contact in the backfield and he's done just about everything he can to turn it into a positive play and you know once again the Giants here are faced with a third and long. A flat start for the Giants who have third and eleven. Defensively for Dallas prior to the snap. Here's Bradshaw underneath. Knocked down at the marker. First down, Giants. McCann on the tackle. Looked like a Keem Nix just does a good job of at least picking off one, and then it was two guys there to try to make the play on Ahmad Bradshaw before he picks up the first down. And Ahmad Bradshaw probably should have been stopped before he made it to the first down marker but just a good job of individual running right there on his part to pick it up. Nix with the block on Brady James. Eleven and a half yards on third and eleven. Down by six. Manning steps up hits Bradshaw and Ahmad carries a tackler inside the forty five to the forty three. Gain of six. This is something that we saw from Eli Manning last week against Seattle just being very patient and he's had to be patient again in this game you know so many times we've seen him already having to come down underneath to his backs check it down and just try to get as much of it as he can. They're the offensive leaders for the Giants. Shaw again and 
and the ball comes out. A scramble for the football, and it's a first down Giants as it's recovered by New York. Mod Bradshaw with his fifth fumble. This one turns into a first down. And look who it is that comes in and makes the tackle and knocks it loose. Mike Jenkins. He turned one of those down last week as we saw against the Green Bay Packers. But the helmet right there on the ball for Ahmad Bradshaw. And they're fortunate to get that one back. That's Duke Calhoun, it looks like, the rookie. And it was. He got back on top of the football. And Bradshaw, who has been working hard on this drive, now takes a seat. After his fifth fumble of the year, first down New York. And I didn't see Coughlin say anything to him. Play clock winding down, and the pass is out of the reach of Nix. You know, I was going into earlier before that flag was thrown a while back on Kevin Gilbride and the job that he has done. The thing about this New York Giants offense is. You know when you talk about balance and every offensive coordinator wants to be balanced they want the ability to run the ball against seven man fronts and then throw the ball versus eight man fronts not many teams can really do that the Giants are one of them they throw the ball very well second in the NFL in terms of big plays down the field as well and all three of their running backs averaging over five yards a carry. Little pump fake and the pass caught by Jacobs who's brought down from behind. Play was made by Victor Butler. Victor Butler, who is in his second year out of Oregon State, gets in there and makes a play a gain of only one. Yeah, and Paul Pascaloni, you got to remember when Wade Phillips was fired, he was the defensive coordinator. Paul Pascaloni, he was the defensive line coach. He takes over that role. He went, he came to Dallas with Bill Parcells, and then when Parcells went to Miami and Tony Sperano, they hired Pascaloni to be the defensive coordinator. He was there for two years, got fired a year ago, right before the playoffs. He was out of work about 20 minutes before the Cowboys found out about it, and Jerry hired him, and everybody I have talked to is very impressed with him. Pass is caught. That's Barden. And on third and nine, a completion of 27 yards for Eli Manning. Well, they knew coming into the game that Ramses Barden was going to get an opportunity because of Steve Smith. He's a, he's six six, not overly fast, but he runs a good route. He got pressure up on Michael Jenkins. He snaps it to the inside, and just a good job. And of course, good protection by the New York Giants. If you're going to be able to do that, you've got to control Demarcus Ware, and they've done that in this game. 26 yard completion. That's. The long of the year for Barton, who now has caught three. Had a big one at Dallas three weeks ago. Bradshaw back in the lineup, fighting his way near the one. They're going to mark his forward progress stopped at the two, but I'm sure Tom Coughlin will say, I, I can get mad at him for the fumbles. But here's a little guy who's dragging six people with him. Well, let me just tell you, he's one of these guys that I would have loved to have played with as a player. I mean, he is tough as nails. He shows up every week. The fumbles, yeah, you deal with those types of things because you know this guy's going to produce more times than not. Now Mike Jenkins is down for the Cowboys. They look at him. We'll take a break. Mike Jenkins is slow to get off the field. You see at the end of the play right there he gets hit by Bear Pasco number 86 that's Jenkins with his head snapping back able to get up and walk off they're already without Newman in the lineup and now Jenkins who was a pro bowler last year he heads off. And the only corners left active are Scandrick and McCann. Yeah, you think about it, even when they had their starting cornerbacks this season, they've been the worst defensive secondary in all of football, giving up touchdowns and not getting interceptions. Now they got their two starters out of the lineup. Second and goal for the Giants. And it looked like Will Beatty, who was an eligible receiver, moved early, and that play never happened. Ball start. Number 65, offense, five yard penalty, second down. So it's Beatty who is finally getting into a game on the end of the line, and he went too soon. 
Coming back from that broken foot and now he jogs to the sideline. It's second and goal and they're doing the tests on the sideline up high on Jenkins. Just interesting to me that for a guy who was ostracized this week for not making the tackle gets injured in this game sticking his head in there to make a tackle second and goal. And he's back to that same spot. A gain of five. Third and goal. Boy, the Giants just don't vary from what they believe, you know, and that is pound you with the football. And even with offensive linemen injured and shuffling them up, they're going to continue to do the things that they believe in. And that was the real question mark coming into this season was were they going to be able to run the football the way that they had and be the type of offense that they had been in previous years? And They've been that and more. <laughs> Pass is picked off. Intercepted by McCann. No one to get him. Brian McCann all alone. Touchdown Dallas Cowboys. There are no flags. First career interception for McCann, and he turns it into a touchdown. And that was on Hakeem Nix. Eli Manning was expecting him to run a slant route, and Hakeem starts on it, as you're going to see, but then he stops right there. And McCann already had inside leverage, but you have got to cross his face once you start there because the quarterback's anticipating that you will, and when you don't, that's what happens. 101 yards on the return and like that with the Giants so close to maybe taking a lead McCann checks out himself up on the big screen. The two head coaches Jason Garrett's Cowboys are up by 13. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000 mile five year powertrain limited warranty. Well, for a team that was nearly a two touchdown underdog coming into this game, they get a 101 yard interception return for a touchdown from Brian McCann. And if the Giants didn't know they had their hands full coming in, they do now, trailing by 13 with seven and a half to go in the first half. Boy, and Dallas just doesn't get a lot of interceptions, let alone to run it all the way back for a touchdown. This is a team that had only five interceptions all season coming in and just 10 takeaways. They turn their 11th right into points. Here's Blackman. And Will Blackman carries it back out to the 25. So 101 yards from Brian McCann, number 37, his first in the NFL. Leatherneck in Afghanistan cheering. The Cowboy fans are at least 16 3 Dallas. A Giants team that's put up 82 points combined over the last two weeks. Offensively, they've been for the most part shut down as Branch over the left side carries it for four penalty flag flies. Here's a call. Personal foul, face mask, number 62 of the offense. Half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. Well, that's Mitch Petras, the rookie, and yeah, he's sure enough, he's got he's got a face mask, and it looked like there was a face mask. We'll go back to the interception here on a with Akeem Nix and Brian McCann, and you see there. McCann had inside leverage and the only explanation for Hakeem Nix was if he was going to try to come out of that route but that's hard to do read those types of things in the red zone and then based on Eli Manning's conversation with him on the sidelines no question Hakeem Nix was or at least Eli Manning was expecting him to run the slant he stopped on it because McCann had such good leverage but you just can't do that to your quarterback. Saw that near face mask 
on Jeremy Clark wearing number 73 for Dallas. He was just added former giant for a short time penalty flag on the completion of Barton. And let's get the call from Bill Levy. Illegal formation number 65 was not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty repeat first down. So that's three things on Will Beatty. One he didn't report. Two down on second and goal from just outside the one he had a false start and now he wasn't on the line of scrimmage. And this will be it'll be a bad film session for Will Beatty well, if he sits with Coffey. You know Joe I think they got the number wrong. I don't even think Will Beatty was was in the game so I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure exactly what that was about but regardless they're saying that somebody yeah, he's thinking yeah, of course I wasn't on the line of scrimmage. I, I was on the sideline for crying out loud. <laughs> so it's first and 25 Bradshaw Brady James. Where was in there as well a gain of just two in this offense they had the one good drive that ended. In the interception return for the touchdown, but they've made mistakes. They've had penalties, and now they have second and 23. Yeah, it's been sloppy. And on the previous possession, remember, the Cowboys kicked that ball out of bounds. So that possession started on the 40 yard line, and it's generally expected you're going to come away with some points. They get the interception, Cowboys come away with the points, but right now, Giants have been very sloppy on the offensive side of the ball. Hand off to Bradshaw. There is nothing there. Scandrick up to make the stop, and this crowd is letting him hear it. A loss of one. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, Mike Jenkins remains in the locker room. Team doctors are looking at his neck at this time. We'll update you on his status when we get more information. Back to you. Well, so now Mike Jenkins and Terrence Newman are off the field and in the locker room. You wouldn't know it. By the way, this Dallas defense has played. Even recently with Scandrick and McCann at the corners. It's third and 24. Pass is bobbled and dropped by Boss. Throw a little high. It's fourth down and let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. Well, after being thumped by the Giants last week, Seattle doing a nice job of bouncing back today in Arizona. Matt Hassel back. Hooking up with Dion Butler. Butler makes a couple of moves and outruns three Cardinals to the end zone. 63 yards on the score. 17 10. Seahawks on top in the second quarter. Joe, Troy, and Pan. Makes a difference with Hasselbeck at quarterback. Five to go in the half. Dodge hits a line drive that goes out of bounds. Well, he's having a tough night too. I'll say Dallas will start this possession on the Giants side of the 50 and that was just 32 yards after a 31 yarder earlier. As you look at the Cowboy head coaches under Jerry Jones. That picture makes you smile doesn't it. <laughs> you got the three championships with Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer. How did this one make you smile. Troy which one this picture <laughs> any of those guys no. no but hey look at this game here Joe and we knew coming in that the Giants couldn't afford to give the Cowboys any reason to have hope if you want to jump up on a team that's one and seven you want to pound on them early and let them give up and they've given Dallas all kinds of reason to believe how about over the middle Martellus Bennett good throw by Kidna. And while we talk about all the things going on around the Dallas Cowboys, Kitten has made some good throws here in this first half. Well, he really has. And I think that overall, while he has been the starter, he's played decent. You know, I mean, he had the interceptions a couple of weeks ago. A number of those balls were tipped. This is a guy, he's making his 118th start, you know, here today. So he has played a lot of football, and he's, he's won games. down here's Felix Jones Terrell Thomas up to make the stop no game 
But there is no question that we're looking at a different team in the Dallas Cowboys from what we've seen in recent weeks. And you know, Tony Romo going down, there's a number of people that would say, well, this season wouldn't be nearly as bad as it is if he had stayed healthy. And of course, it was these Giants that knocked him out. They were one and four when he was healthy. You know, I have a hard time saying that much would have been different with Tony Romo on the field. Not to imply that he's not a better player, but this team already had problems. Big toss, getting it rolls, and then throws it away from Bennett. There was nothing out there. You look at the NFC East. The Giants are on top at six and two. Philadelphia plays at Washington on Monday night. And then there's Dallas at one and seven. They play in Arlington, which will be the site for Super Bowl 45 on February 6th. Witten at the bottom of your screen. Barber up top. Throw to Witten. Trying to make a move. Stays on his feet for a moment after getting around Deion Grant. But short of a first down, it's fourth down, and the Cowboys will take the points. Well, and I think that's a good defensive possession by the New York Giants. I mean, when you consider where the Cowboys got the ball because of the punt. To hold Dallas then to only three points on this drive is, is pretty good. Beeler's had an extra point tipped and missed. His first miss on an extra point this season. It's a 23 yard try. And he's two for two. And it's 19 to three. Dallas. Fox Wednesday, it's the season premiere of Human Target. The man who will guard your life with his own is getting a little backup. Your life is on the line. They're the team to call. Human Target season premiere Wednesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. We're going to talk about the Giants when they get the ball, but just to follow up on a point that you talked about and they talked about on the pregame show, Fox NFL Sunday. Going through my notes, you and I did that game when they were 0 and 2 and playing in Houston. And that week, the Dallas players had a players only meeting after week two. And Terrence Newman was openly questioning the practice environment. And then you roll the clock forward and they get off to the one and seven start. They fire Wade Phillips. And Jason Garrett said expectations aren't about playing a Super Bowl in your home stadium. It's about having a good crisp Wednesday followed by a good crisp Thursday and people showing up on time hustling. I mean you talk about back to Little League fundamentals, that's where they are. Well, he definitely got these players' attention. For most of them, I think it was a welcome change. There's always going to be some dissent amongst others, and Jason Garrett, quite frankly, doesn't care. Good booming kick this time from Beeler. That's Blackman from around the three. Makes a move. Can't make the 30. Mark him at the 26, Sean Lee, downfield to make the stop. So now what do the Giants have to do a team that comes in number two overall averaging over 400 yards per game and Manning has thrown that one pick which went for seven points. Well I think they've just got to clean some things up you know the interception obviously killed them down there. I mean that's a that's at least a 10 point swing and probably a 14 point swing. But they've got to eliminate these pre snap penalties that have kept them in third and long situations and they've had no chance to really sustain any type of drives. Starting from the 26. Manning airs it out down the field for Manningham to the 30. McCann on the stop after a completion and run of 44 yards. Well, it's the same combination of routes that we saw Dallas run. They're going to release Kevin Boss here, and that then pulls the safety. You're going to see the safety right there in the middle. He has to go with Kevin Boss, so then you get no middle help. You're one on one on the outside. They call that coverage two switch, but once they release the tight end vertically off the field, up the field, then the outside corner, McCann has to know he has no help and has to then cover that guy to the middle of the field if the tight end released across the field 
then he would get safety help. Giants spend a timeout. They have two left, two and a half minutes to go in the half. And what is a 16 point game? And you think that Eli Manning and the Giants offensively, Troy, have got to take advantage. The fact that a two time Pro Bowler, Newman, is out. The Pro Bowler from last year, Mike Jenkins, is out. Now Newman comes back on the field, and we have not seen him since the opening possession. And Dallas needs him because they just are thin. At the cornerback spot. Yeah, and you would expect that the Giants will continue to take advantage and get something going. Remember, this is a Giants team that just doesn't quit. Think back to the last time these two teams met. New York was down 20 to 7, and they still were able to come back and win that game, rattled off 30 something straight points. It's a big drive right here, though, for the New York Giants. They have over 200 yards of offense, but just three points. Newman didn't look like he was moving around well at all. As Manning throws, completes to Barton. Rams is to the 25, a gain of five. I think that's part of it, though, Joe, is you really can't take a breath if you're Dallas against this offense because they are so explosive. Second and five. Manning throws, pass complete. Good effort by Nix. Got away from a tackle. That was McCann. He whiffed. And with that effort, 15 yards, 10 of them after the missed tackle. Akeem Nix is like Dallas's version of Des Bryant. I mean, look how big and physical he is. Just great hands. I mean, he's got huge hands, and he's strong at the point of the catch. And he's able to haul those passes in. And then he's just difficult to get to the ground. I asked him the other day, what is the thing that you do best? And he said, run after the catch. Pretty good example of it there. Ten yards after the catch. First down, Giants were at the two minute warning. You see the second quarter offense. The yards are there for the Giants, the points are not. Interception by Manning for the end seven points to McCann. On first and goal, and this one is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, caught by Barden, and he took it away. That was nearly picked off, but Rams's Barton was there to haul in the catch, second and goal. That was not a good throw by Eli Manning. Not a good decision. That ball should have been intercepted. On second and goal, end zone juggled and dropped. Boss, who had his first last week, almost had number two on the year. And let's go back to that near interception. Well, you're going to see the relationship of the defender. You know, right there, it's Keith Brooking, and he was in a position to undercut that throw, and it was a dangerous throw there by Eli Manning. This last one is one. It was a good throw here. Kevin Boss got to make that play. Right through the hands and into the face mask. So now it's third and goal. Defensive play by Scandrick on Barton, but a flag is down. Indication is holding against the Giants. Holding. Number 76 offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. And so it's a hold defensively for Dallas after a first and goal from the 10. That's right here on right guard Chris Snee. Just Jay Ratliff, and you saw that left arm get up around his neck, and they're just trying to get the ball up high to Ramses Barton at 6 6. They're in the red zone, but it wouldn't have counted anyway. Tides delivered the first points of the day. Dallas with 19 straight, and now Tynes is two for two, hits from 25. How about if we do it then and now? Phil McConkey, before signing with the Giants as a 27 year old rookie, McConkey served for four years in the Navy as a pilot. Probably best known for the touchdown catch in Super Bowl 21 off of Mark Bavaro deflection. And now today, part of a pregame ceremony and a two way feed back 
and fourth with Afghanistan. Well, Phil McConkey is an impressive individual. I spent some time out in San Diego this summer, and he was kind enough to take me and a few others to visit the Navy SEALs operation in Coronado. And what an impressive group of individuals that is. But Phil helped line that up, and uh, good to see him here in New York today. He was the definition of tough as a player. Obviously, not a big bodied guy. He took hits. Kept popping up and coming back for more. You know, now he's running. In fact, when I saw him last summer, he was training for a track meet, and it's 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 by age, and so he's competing against others his age. But it's hundred yard dashes and hurdles and all kinds of wow. stuff. You know, I mean, he, the guy's a fitness nut, and oftentimes he'll go train with some of the Navy SEALs there in Coronado. It's a 13 point game, and the Cowboys are about to get it back. Des Bryant. The rookie. He's got two punt returns for a touchdown. Spins off a couple of tacklers, and they're going to mark him out of bounds after a good return out at the 37 yard line. Every time he touches the ball, something happens for Dallas, and it's usually something good. But the early game headliners in a win. Jay Cutler, a two touchdown win over the Minnesota Vikings. There's his day. Josh Freeman. Another win for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and David Garrard who got hot against the Dallas Cowboys. He had a big day through for 342. And Jacksonville's seven point win over Houston. Cowboys offense averaging over 11 yards per play. And on the ground it's Felix Jones. And Jones is knocked down at the marker. A nine and a half yards from Jones. Well, and they've run the ball well. This is probably the best that Dallas has run the ball all season long, really. You know, they've been able to maintain some balance. Of course, the score has dictated that, but Perry Fuel, the defensive coordinator for the Giants, he anticipated this. He said, I think they're going to come into this game and try to run the ball a little bit more than what they have seen. Now, of course, in this situation, they will start throwing it at some point. They're going to have to call a timeout here. They have three left, and they call it. Surprised they huddled up, which they did before that second and one. And with 42 seconds left, timeout Dallas. We look back. That circus catch by Des Bryant. Extra point was missed. Cowboys challenged it. Call was reversed. Touchdown Dallas. And then this 101 yards from McCann on a third and goal. Interception thrown by Eli Manning. While the yards are there offensively for the Giants, with a total of 226, they have just two field goals. Visa halftime's coming up. Kurt Terry, Howie Michael, and Jimmy talk about the Vikings. Their troubles continue. They lost on the road at Chicago earlier today, and the Bucks bounce back. About Tampa Bay, they're six and three. I think Jason Gary right now would like to be aggressive with John Kitten and try to come away with some more points, but right now he's got all the momentum working in his favor. <laughs> Kitten underneath to Felix Jones and a good tackle by Terrell Thomas, a gain of just two. Yeah, that was a good tackle by Terrell Thomas. He got picked on a little bit earlier. We saw the touchdown that Des Bryant was able to get over him and then another big play down the field but a good open field tackle there by Thomas. It's almost like the Cowboys don't know exactly how they want to play the rest of this game clock is they still have two timeouts left. There's a first catch for Roy Williams and a timeout taken but now there's just 10 seconds. Well they're not used to leading at this point in the first half. This is uncharted water for them Joe. So they've been slow getting plays away. And now with 10 seconds left they've got a third down but it's been an impressive day so far in the coaching debut head coaching debut for Jason Garrett. Well I th yeah, it has been and I, I think that guys did get the you know it got their attention this week but you know you come into a game like this at one and seven everybody comes in optimistic but as soon as something bad happens when you're in that situation then you immediately think OK here we go again but the Giants never gave Dallas a reason not to believe that this week was going to be the same as it has been every other week and that's why right now as this game has gone along we've seen the Cowboys gain more and more confidence. It's been impressive offensively been impressive defensively and they lead by 
13 points with 10 seconds left in the half. One timeout remaining. That's going to be a false start on Kitna. False start, number three, offense, five yard penalty, third down. So, just to give you the numbers, it would be a 67 yard field goal from here. So, that tells you they need to get 14, 15 yards or so to give Beeler a realistic shot. He's got a big leg, and it's third day. They can use the middle of the field here. With a timeout left. Kitna buys time and throws it away. Now it's fourth down. Pressure by Justin Tuck. And two seconds are left in the half. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't see anybody running out there and. Yeah, they're not even going to take a chance on getting a punt blocked or anything. I, my guess is they're going to drop back here and just see if they can't get one into the end zone. Or just take a knee. Two seconds left in the half. And getting to make sure the clock winds down to zeros, and it's a 13 point game at the half. Certainly the biggest play of the day. One of the biggest, I'm sure, around the NFL. Here in week number 10 is this return by McCann. And Jason Garrett was there running right alongside him on the sideline. <laughs> well, we've talked to Tom Coughlin a lot here in recent weeks, and he's been concerned when we've talked to him about the turnovers that they've had and how that might impact them. It impacted them here in the first half of this game. So the Dallas Cowboys. One and seven. Trying to end a five game winning streak for the Giants. 19 six at the half. More people go with Visa. And welcome to the Visa Halftime. Kurt Menefee along with Terry Howie, Michael and Jimmy. And I guess the coaching change can make a difference at least in attitude through a half. 19-6 Cowboys on top of the Giants. Rams out to play the 49ers. Troy Smith, third year pro, played at Ohio State University, won the Heisman Trophy. Play action. Josh Morgan, where are you? Down the right sideline. Excellent effort all the way down to the one yard line. Jason Gore would take it in. 7-3. 49ers over to visiting Rams. And then late on in the second quarter, out of the shotgun, Sam Bradford out of Oklahoma. The number one draft choice in the entire league finds Amendola. Danny Amendola, it's 10 to 10. Rams and the 49ers halftime score. Seattle at Arizona. Tim Hightower, single back set, wants to go offside, cuts back inside, touchdown 7 0. Arizona over the visiting Seattle Seahawks. But all Matt Hasselback has done in this game is throw for 273 yards and bombs like this one to Deion Butler. Excellent catch. Then the speed avoids the, the tackle, takes it in from 63 yards out, 17 to 10. The Seahawks, awfully impressive on the road, up by seven over Arizona. Denver with a huge lead over Kansas City at the break. Jacksonville won today on a Hail Mary at the end of regulation to knock off Houston. The Dolphins lose two quarterbacks but still win their football game. The Bengals have now dropped six in a row losing today at Indy. The Jets for the second straight week went on the road in overtime today knocking off Cleveland. The Lions have now lost 25 in a row on the road while Buffalo gets its first win of the season. The Bears beat up on the Vikings and Carolina falls at Tampa. The Buccaneers now 6-3 and three on the season. But let's get back to the Giants and Cowboys. Mr. Strahan. Well, it looks like the Giants looked at the Cowboys' record and not at the Cowboys' team. Look at the personnel. If you look at the personnel, this team is talented. This team can win. Just haven't put it together. They walked into a trap today, first half, and the big turnover. Only one turnover for the Giants, but it was a costly one that gave a big swing and momentum to the Cowboys. 
And it's obvious anybody watching the game, the Cowboys are playing with more enthusiasm, more passion for the game. The other thing, the zone coverage for the defense, I think, is really giving the Giants some problems. That'll help the Cowboys because they got both corners hurt. But there's going to be times, even in that zone coverage, those, those defensive backs are going to be isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, Giants control the clock for over 20 minutes in the first half. That'll wear defense down. The Cowboys need to find a way to convert on third down, extend some drives, keep that defense off the field. It seems like everyone's getting an MRI or an X-ray in the locker room, particularly in the secondary. If you play zone, if you play zone against a great quarterback, he will burn you. So, Giants? Haven't been burned yet. Some of you get local news up next. Others come back for more highlights. And how about this highlight? The Cowboys' Brian McCann with the Visa Super Play of the first half. A 101-yard interception to return for a touchdown. Visas. All right, TB. Let's do it. Let's do it. Why don't you do it? No, I'm, I'm me, you, we're one. Minnesota, Chicago. Jay Cutler to Kell and Davis. First catch of the year. Why, why not make it a fancy one? 19-yard touchdown, 27-13. Bears over the Vikings. Five, three interceptions on the day. Lance Briggs picks this one off. 27-13. Bears beat the Vikings. Carolina, Tampa Bay, LeGarrette Blunt. That's an unsigned. That is a free agent signing rookie out of Oregon University, folks. And this is a 17-yard touchdown. Great spin effort at the goal line. 31-16. Tampa Bay beats Carolina. Cincinnati at Indianapolis. Carson Palmer intercepted by Kelvin Hayden, Jimmy. Wide open. I'll tell you, he was open. Kelvin Hayden taking back to the house. 31-yard interception return. 10 or nothing Colts over the Bengals. And then in the fourth quarter, Palmer looking for Terrell Owens. His pass intercepted by Aaron Francisco. Third pick on the day for Palmer. 23-17. Colts beat the Bengals. Jet and Cleveland. That's the Ryan brothers. That's kind of nice. I like that. Fourth quarter, Colt McCoy. Two. You got it. Massaqua. Muhammad Massaqua. Three-yard touchdown. We're tied up at 20 off. And then we go into overtime. Quick slant to Santonio Holmes. Remember him with the Steelers? This is why he's so good. 37-yard touchdown in overtime. It is the Jets beating Cleveland. Houston at Jacksonville, fourth quarter. Hail Mary. Oh, yeah. Do we go in overtime? You hit? No. Gorba Quinn backs it down, but it's picked off by Mike Thomas. 51-yard touchdown. Say it ain't so. Jacksonville, 31-24 for Houston. Detroit at Buffalo. Buffalo has yet to win a game. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Shovel pass to Fred Jackson. Second touchdown on the day for Jackson. And 14-12 win. In fact, Detroit was going for two, and the quarterback threw it out of the end zone. Hard to imagine, but Buffalo it happened. gets its first win. Detroit's 25th straight loss on the road. A new NFL record. Second half is next. I should have said it. start for Jason Garrett taking over this week as head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Follow your favorite team all season long. Just go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Dallas will start this half with a football. Des Bryant who has been electrifying as a rookie for the Cowboys waits for it. 13 point Dallas lead. From outside the five. Bryant brought down from behind inches shy of the 30 down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, by contrast to the Giants, the Cowboys have been showing outstanding energy all day. Jason Garrett told me at the half that as far as his cornerback situation goes, Mike Jenkins, who is out with a strained neck, well, we just got to survive that, he said. Tom Coughlin says if we start making some plays, maybe we can get some momentum, and then maybe we can get some energy. Back to you. Well, right now, for the Giants, it's up to the defense, which is the number one ranked defense in the NFL. They've been on a roll during this five game win streak. They've allowed just 15 points per game. Gronkowski is overthrown. And now the lights go out. The lights just went out here at New Meadowland Stadium. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I 
I don't know that it's to the point where it's too dark to play, but it's it's pretty close. And we'll get word as Bill Levy will go over and check with the stadium ops people, I would guess, to see what the deal is. So we'll take a break. And Troy will try to find that switch he leaned on accidentally. Get the lights back on. We're playing football here in Jersey. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Nissan. Innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation for all. By State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Well, the word is we're going to play. Okay. <laughs> That's good. A little darker than before. It is really dark down to our right. Yeah, that's probably the darkest right behind where the Cowboys are right now on the field is probably the darkest area of the field. Cowboys are moving down toward the light. And on second and ten here is Felix Jones and see if this defense for the Giants comes alive. O.C. Human Yura makes the play. Mike Pereira is with us from out in Los Angeles. Mike what is the procedure typically when you're in this type situation. Well Bill Levy would make the decision on this. He's the guy the referee has the total jurisdiction. If he thinks it's not light enough he can suspend the game. Once he suspends it then it goes to New York to the football operations command center and then they'll make the decision when to restart and whether or not power is going to get brought back up provided the phones work it's third and ten Kitna drops it off that's Felix Jones room to run on third and ten Felix Jones may take it all the way Felix Jones will coast for the touchdown in a game of big plays for the Dallas Cowboys they just get another 71 yards to the light and to the end zone for well, Dallas. The Giants are in man coverage. It looks like right here. Now that's tuck. I couldn't tell who exactly was supposed to be in man coverage on Felix Jones because they're man elsewhere. And then once Felix Jones gets the ball to the outside, everybody running with their backs to Felix Jones and with a convoy out in front of them. And once Felix is in the open field, he's not going to get caught. And just like that, 26 6. The celebration. And we look at Camp Leatherneck in Afghanistan. The Cowboy fans are having fun so far in this one. The Dallas Cowboys, who were 0 for 10 on third down in the previous meeting between these two, convert on their first third down. It was third and 10, 71 yards. That's a career long catch for Felix Jones, and it's the longest pass play of the season for Dallas. As the Cowboys' offensive coordinator is now also their head coach. And here's Will Blackman trying to give some momentum back to the Giants. And a good return by Blackman of 43 yards. Let's go back to the touchdown. You're going to see that they're in man coverage here running off. The problem is, is there nobody in the middle that's going to account for Felix Jones. Just a blown coverage there as to who it was that was assigned to him. Whenever you're running a screenplay like that, if you're able to get the ball into the guy's hands against man coverage and block then who's covering him, you got a real chance. Human Yura here felt like he got hold and held, and he probably did. But just more than anything, a busted assignment by New York, and then getting it against the perfect coverage, man coverage. Kevin Boss at the top of your screen. Banks of lights are starting to come back on here at New Meadowlands Stadium. First down, Giants, and this one is caught by Manningham. So far, they're saying catch. Wow. I don't know how he caught it, but. Getting it away from McCann, that's a catch. 
I mean, all Eli did was just lay it out there wow. because it didn't look like there was any chance for Manningham to, to outrun McCann to make that completion. Giants hurry up so there is no chance for a review. And Bradshaw plugs ahead for four yards. What a catch by Manningham. It looked like he may have had it clean going to the ground and maintain possession. Well, it was a really nice throw as well. I mean, that was that was great coverage there by Brian McCann. But one heck of a reception. Ball did move when you see Eli take a shot from Ratliff. Manningham went to the ground, but it looked like he had his arm under it. It's a 20 yard catch and a four yard run by Bradshaw and a toss to Ahmad Bradshaw. Gets two. You know what's interesting about that touchdown to Felix Jones was the Cowboys had still not yet converted on a third down. That was the first third down that they had converted, even going back to their last matchup against the Cowboys or against the Giants. So they were 0 14 on third downs going into that one. And then they busted loose for, for a touchdown. Look at the Giants as they trail in the second half. The first time in the last six games. It's third down and four. This one takes off and what a catch by Nix. Wow. A one handed catch for a first down. This guy's amazing. I mean he really is. He had he had an awfully good rookie season and he has taken that and just elevated his play. Oh. Here in this second year. I mean, pretty remarkable. I saw him catching balls on at Friday's practice, Joe, one handed. You know, every time somebody does a game, they talk about the size of his hands. They're huge, but he's able to make those types of plays. Uh, pretty incredible stuff. You asked him if he could palm a basketball. He said, I could do that in eighth grade. I think he was doing it in second grade. And here is Bradshaw to the 20. End of three. Here's a game break. Here's Kurt. And here's a first, Tim Tebow out of the shotgun, throwing a pass. It's good for a touchdown, his first NFL pass to Spencer Larson. Tebow also ran one in earlier. He's got two scores. Denver cruising 42-10 over KC in the third. Go Troy Penn. All right, and those electrical issues there at the Meadowlands causing us a little bit of trouble right now. The Giants, of course, in a deep hole against the Dallas Cowboys. We will get you back there just as soon as we can. In the meantime, we'll keep you updated as to what is going on with that game between the Cowboys and the Giants and around the rest of the National Football League in just a second. But first, we will give you a little quick commercial break. And on the other side, hopefully, get you back to the Meadowlands. Stick around. Fox is sponsored by Burger King. Have it your way. All right, the electrical issues continue at the new Meadowlands. Smoke is coming out of a transformer, and so the entire stadium has gone dark. While they hold that game up, we will get you out to San Francisco, where the St. Louis Rams and the San Francisco 49ers are going at it. Troy Smith making his second start with the 49ers and looking good in the first quarter. Hooking up with Josh Morgan, 65 yards on the completion. Morgan can't outrun everyone. Tripped up down the one-yard line. That's okay. Frank Gore would score, and it would be a 7-3 49er lead. With that come the Rams, Sam Bradford to Danny Amandola, five-yard score. That tied the game at 10 apiece. And that's where we stand right now in the third quarter. 10-10. We'll send you out for that game. We'll get you back to the Meadowlands just as soon as the electricity comes back. But right now, here is Sam Rosen and Tim Ryan. Across the line, right in the middle of Ray of Franklin, along with Demetric Evans. Encroachment defense number 92. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. We welcome all of you who've been watching the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco where the St. Louis Rams and the San Francisco 49ers all even at 10-10. Rams with the ball first and five at their own 41-yard line. Sam Bradford, the quarterback, first pick overall, has played well. Got Steven Jackson in the backfield. The play fake in the roll. Bradford being chased by Manny Lawson. Takes it out of bounds 
at the first down marker. He's got enough for the first down. And for those of you joining us, here's what went on earlier in the day. This was after a long pass to Josh Morgan, 65 yards. Frank Gore took it in for a one-yard touchdown run. The answer was to Danny Amendola, the Rams top receiver, catching the short pass from Sam Bradford. Each team with a field goal as well. The Rams with the ball here, first down with three wide receivers. Steven Jackson finds an opening. Big game for Steven Jackson. His biggest run of the game is down to the 49ers 28 yard line. The safety Reggie Smith takes him down. Well, you got three guys with really good blocks. Down block there, gonna pull around and get the backer and then watch the kick out block out to the edge by Renardo Foster. So you have the left guard, Jacob Bell does a great job. Goldberg comes around and is able to seal up to Keo Spikes. Terrific block there. And then the left tackle, Renardo Foster, able to push out and wash out Demetric Evans. Three really good blocks. 25 yard run for Steven Jackson. End around here to Amendola. Avoided one man. There's a flag on the play as Amendola goes out of bounds at the 25 yard line. It's going to get Gibson with a, I think, a block in the back, it looked like down here on the, on the perimeter. It's Brandon Gibson. Illegal block in the back, offense number 11. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Brandon Gibson, the wide receiver. Sam Bradford has had a good game. 15 for 21, 136 yards, one touchdown pass. Steven Jackson after that 25 yard run, 14 carries, 64 yards. And Danny Amendola with five catches. He leads the team now with 50. Reception. Four wide receivers in for the Rams. Watch how fast this ball comes out for Sam Bradford. Stops, throws, and completes it. To Brandon Gibson down at the 27-yard line. For those of you who uh, might be checking in and looking for the Giants and the Cowboys, there's been a power outage that at the Meadowlands. Lights down, TV <laughs> power is out. I don't think it was just the lights with a power outage in the Meadowlands. How about that home team? Oh. Giants have had an outage as well. Michael Olmadawanui, the tight end, is split out wide right. Pressure on Bradford, gets rid of it to Jackson. High steps it across the 20. As if Stephen Jackson wanted to kick it into another gear, went into his high step. And takes it down to the 18 yard line. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. Yeah, I want you just to watch Patrick Willis right here on this play. And, and watch what it's like to pursue as a linebacker in pro football. Watch this. Good job by Bradford. He's going to get it out. Now watch 52. Oh, you couldn't see it right there. Goldberg chopped him down, and he did a flip and a half in the air before he landed on the ground. No huddle offense for the Rams. They've got a first down, and now the 49ers call a timeout. That's their first. Their first time out of the second half. This is a big game in the NFC West, and the Rams and 49ers are tied. All right, just to update you in case you just tuned in, or even if you're watching already, the lights are just starting to come back on at the new Meadowlands. The game is still suspended right now. We will get you out there right now to check up on the latest as to what's going on between the Giants and Cowboys. Let's send it to Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, and Pam Oliver. Well, I guess we're not. We're going to send it to San Francisco while those guys get wait, uh, wait while the lights and everything comes back on at the Meadowlands. That game's still suspended. We'll get you to San Francisco, then to the Meadowlands as soon as they start playing again. Now, back to Sam Rosen. Foot, that back step, and that ball just comes out on time with tremendous accuracy. There's second and five for the Rams. Led 3-0, three, three, nothing, trailed 10-3, and then tied it. Jackson. Slip one tackle. Jackson goes in. Touchdown. Great run by Steven Jackson. His third rushing touchdown. All right, and so now the power is indeed back in the Meadowlands. Let's send it to Joe Buck to take it over from here. All right, Kurt. It's a first and ten for the Giants at the 15-yard line. Down 26-6. 
Reigns steps up, has room to run, and will slide. They'll mark him down outside the five. There was a generator that blew outside the stadium. In fact, you can kind of smell a little smoke wafting through this stadium, New Meadowlands. And uh, it was surreal, to say the least, when the lights went out. It was pitch black in here, and then slowly different banks of lights started to come back on a 12 minute delay and it's now second down Giants and a number of players not knowing what was going on nor did anyone else but they they hit the ground a number of those guys did. Beatty comes in as an eligible receiver and Bradshaw takes it to the five. Spencer on the stop depends on the spot and they're saying. First down so first and goal. Giants need a touchdown. We lost our graphics temporarily because of the power outage. There's Mike Jenkins, who is now in street clothes, so his day is finished. So a first and goal when we come back from the five yard line for the Giants who trail by 20. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Burger King. Have it your way. Well this is the third time for the Giants inside the red zone. 26 to 6 game 9 0 1 left in the third quarter. Previous two trips inside the red zone have led to three Giants points and seven Cowboys points. Play action. Middle. Touchdown Manningham. And just like that, the Giants take it down the field. Well, they run Mario Manningham in motion, and then you've got play action in the backfield to Brandon Jacobs. Man coverage against Orlando Scandrick, but because of the play action, you get the linebackers biting up, and then you've got a nice window there for Eli Manning to deliver the ball. Times hits the extra point. So it is now 26 13 with 8.56 left. Well that's what we're left with graphically 26 13 and I'm glad we have that because doing the math and knowing how much time's left and <laughs> being in a pitch black stadium with thousands of people it's been a weird day but in the end it's Dallas on top by 13 now and Des Bryant will be carried back into the end zone he'll take it. Bryant tries the right side. This time the Giants cover it. And Des Bryant got to the 15. That's it. Tollefson downfield to make the play. And we go back to the touchdown at first and goal. Yeah, now this was first and goal. So again, you're going to see Manningham in motion, but it's the play action here that gets Brooking and Brady James to bite. And you see the window there that Eli Manning had to throw the ball. That's a pretty good look at what the quarterback sees down there at the goal line. And how easy that was for the touchdown. Now the crowd jumps back in and they hope that the Giants defense does the same. Well they've woke this crowd up that's for sure. On first down Kitten underneath Barber incomplete. Bowley with good coverage. Second down and ten. You know, overall, this offensive line, Joe, has has given John Kitten a pretty good time and protection to deliver the football. Now they've been balanced in their attack, and that has certainly helped. But we haven't heard much from Justin Tuck and O.C. Human Europe. Trouble with a snap. Pass is caught. A block out on the edge. There goes Des Bryant. 
down the sideline. Phillips caught up to him, and by the time Bryant is brought down, we'll see where they're going to mark it. They mark Bryant back just inside the 40. Well, that's set up pretty well because they put the right tackle, Mark Colombo, out, and then Des Bryant is the one who helped set it up because they had a corner out there to make the play, but when he comes to the inside, then he's got a blocker in Colombo, and then it's a foot race. And for a defense that came into this game being very stingy and giving up big plays, they've given up a number of them here in this one. That one good for 46 yards. First and 10 inside the 40 at the 39. Here's Barber. Marion Barber is the play strung out. Penalty flag flies. Barber did a lot with that, but maybe there was a hold. And there is a hold against Dallas. So I don't hear, and we may not have Bill Levy's mic piped in after the power outage, but it's a hold against the Cowboys. Wipe away that six yard run by Marion Barber. It looked like it might have been on. Kyle Kozar, but you know, hard to really know. And but one thing is, this is this is impressive. What we're seeing from Dallas, even though they still have a lead after the Giants went down and scored, you know, with the momentum shift, for them to come back and and really put together a big play there to Des Bryant. Considering the way they've played in recent weeks, I, I think that says something. It's first down and 20. They fake the handoff and the pass batted down by Human Europe. O.C. is coming off a great month of October when he was the defensive player of the month had seven sacks six forced fumbles and he's really played and he has impressed Perry Fuel the new defensive coordinator when human Ura came to Fuel and said hey you know I can play the run also Fuel knew that human Ura was buying into the program and O.C.'s played great well and he's going to have to play great the rest of this game as well along with the other guys because if they're going to climb back into this down 13 this defense has got to make some stops seven minutes forty three seconds left in the third quarter at second and twenty getting a looking for help fires it to Barber who goes backward Aaron Ross. Aaron Ross with a little bit of help there from golf but Ross is the guy who brings him to the ground. He even got John Kitna running down there and I, I would advise against trying to block Chris Canty. It's third and twenty two. Fake the handoff, kitten it down the sideline. Roy Williams, what a throw. First down and a huge conversion. On third and 22, Kitna hits Roy Williams for 27. Well, they're in cover too, meaning Terrell Thomas has help, but you've got to continue to slough on that route and not let Roy Williams in behind you. He's expecting safety help. But when you're talking about having to get 22 yards for a first down and no receiver in the flat threatening you as the corner you have to continue to retreat. That's two big third downs the other one was the touchdown to Felix Jones and then they get the big 22 yarder for the first down there. Kitna fires Miles Austin touchdown. And John Kitna, who's well over 300 yards now, is having his best day as a Dallas Cowboy. Well, this time it's Miles Austin's turn to work on Corey Webster. He gets him completely turned around. Double move there, post corner post. And that's what creates the separation on Corey Webster. There's a heck of a drive right there after the Giants go down to score to answer and come right back with a touchdown of their own. John Kitna, 13 of 19, 327 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, celebrating since the start of this one. It's a 20-point game again, 33-13, Dallas on top after taking it down the field, and on that drive, a conversion on third and 22. John Kitna 
who prior to the Giants game on October 25th in Dallas last through an NFL regular season pass October 5th of 08. Hasn't won a game since December of 07 in the NFL as his team up under new interim head coach Jason Garrett. Will Blackman on the return, Heard on the tackle, and back to the touchdown to Austin. Yeah, look at the protection that John Kitna has afforded in the pocket. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but there's just not much pressure or forcing Kitna to get the ball out of the hands any sooner than what he wants. You look over the sidelines, Perry Fuel, the defensive coordinator, and Tom Coughlin having a discussion. I mean, this looks like the sideline that we saw for so many weeks of the Dallas Cowboys. And it's taking place there on the New York Giants sideline. That after the 24 yard touchdown catch by Miles Austin. Now here are the Giants. Defense has let him down as well. Talking about New York and Ahmad Bradshaw carries it free. You know one thing though Joe in, in visiting with Perry Fuel the other day he was pretty confident coming into this game and, and he felt that if he could get Dallas the third and six plus that they could dominate this Dallas offense. Well they did that they got him to third and long on the touchdown to Felix Jones they got him to third and twenty two on the conversion then to Roy Williams that then led to the touchdown to Miles Austin. So a couple of big third down conversions by the Dallas Cowboys in, in an area where the Giants had just been dominant throughout this year. Overall the Dallas Cowboys are two for six on third down here it's second and seven. For the Giants with five and a half to play third quarter. Here's one down the field. Contact and a flag. Hakeem Nix with coverage by McCann. Yeah, boy, that was Eli Manning just kind of throwing it up and, and saying a prayer along the way. And I'm not so sure it was a ball that could have been caught, but clearly there was contact made. And Hakeem Nix got turned around and was then trying to backpedal, but. Contact was made. That's the way that the rule reads, and a good call. 35 yard penalty against McCann, who has a 101 yard touchdown on an interception return. And it's a first down at the Dallas 35. What's probably frustrating for defensive coordinator Paul Pascaloni is the fact that it was a two man route, and they had both receivers double covered. And yet the pass interference is basically a completion. From the 35, Manning with time, throws to a wide open Kevin Boss, running for the end zone, touchdown. Well, they run Kevin Boss from from here across the field, and the safety right here is looking up the outside receiver. Looked like that was Akeem Nix, and that's why Kevin Boss comes open as much as he did. In fact, Kevin Boss catches it. He turns, and I think he was expected to have contact. It was close as to whether or not he actually got in. Yeah, he hit that pile on the ball. Looked like it was inside it and across the plane. It's a touchdown, 35 yards, back-to-back -back weeks. For Kevin Boss getting a touchdown catch for Eli Manning. And it's 33 20. As these two teams now trade blows with 519 left in the third quarter. A wild game this is here at New Meadowlands Stadium. There's the score with the time left, and we're only in the third quarter. Back to the touchdown. You see here, Eli Manning does a good job of just extending the play, but Kevin Boss, when he turned around, I think he was surprised himself that there was nobody there. It's not often that a tight end will catch that ball and not have contact as soon as he catches it. But, but what a great drive right there by the Giants. We've seen it now go back and forth. Not much defense on either side, but you know, I go back to what I said earlier with the New York Giants. This is a defense that has been dominant throughout this year. And they have given up some big play, something very uncharacteristic of them. But they've got to make a stop here on this next possession. Meanwhile, for the Giants' touchdown, it was 35 yards to Boss after a 35 yard penalty on Brian McCann on pass interference. And so, Perry Fuel, you specifically asked if Tom Coughlin is. More gentle these days. <laughs> Fuel was a secondary coach for Coughlin for five years in Jacksonville. He said, Well, if he is, I haven't seen it. And those two have been glaring at each other on the sideline 
pretty much all afternoon. And for the record, I knew the answer to that before I asked. Des Bryant from inside the five. Tollison was the first one to get his hands on him. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. San Francisco and St. Louis all tied at 10 in the third quarter. Steven Jackson unties a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Rams trying to hold on to first place in the West. Lead it 17-10 in the fourth. Joe Troy and Pan. All right, Kurt, thanks. There have been 28 points scored in this quarter. Here's Felix Jones left side. Goff, middle linebacker, made the tackle. Gain of three. Solid collision between Felix Jones and Jonathan Goff. You know, Felix Jones is, you know, he had 15 carries back in week four. And then coming into this game tonight, each week after that, his carries had gone down to the point that last week in the loss to the Packers he only had five carries in that game. He's at five and a half per carry five point five yards per carry. Felix Jones. Kidna pulls it down now he'll try the right side looking for Austin. Instead he'll run forced out by Bowley. Gain of four. Third and short coming up for Dallas. John Kidna, I think he's had himself a heck of a game. I mean, he has delivered some some nice passes, but it's all a result of this offensive line giving him some time. Third down and three. Flag comes in. The rookie Jason Pierre Paul was in the neighborhood. Here's the call. It's an illegal shift against Dallas. Penalty declined fourth down. Yeah, it, it looked like there was a lot of movement going on at the time that the ball was snapped, so I'm not surprised by the penalty there. You see Pierre Paul, he was blocked. Leonard Davis had him in a good position and had him clearly blocked, but that's what you do. If you can't get to the quarterback, Stand up, get your hands up, knock it down. A big third down stop there by New York. Just what they needed as they trail by 13. High hanging punt from McBriar. And Will Blackman with a fair catch. 43 yard punt. And here comes Eli Manning. Manning who guided his team down the field with big help from a McCann penalty now has his Giants with their five game winning streak on the line down by 13. Fox box is back. This half, two possessions for the Giants, two touchdowns. Here's Brandon Jacobs. Good run on first down of five. You know, overall, Joe, this defense for Dallas has done a heck of a job slowing this running game down by New York. Paul Pascaloni, new coming in, he said, if we don't know what running back is in the game, we're going to have a huge problem at the snap because. Brandon Jacobs likes to be the power guy off tackle. Ahmad Bradshaw likes to bounce. And how then they play that is determined by who's going to be carrying the ball. And up to this point, this Dallas defense has done a really nice job of slowing this running game down. It's Jacobs still in there. And he gets it from Manning. First down across the 40. And you can just kind of feel it. That the Giants are taking over the momentum in this game. We're only in the third quarter, and it feels like it's shifting here with New York down by 13. Yeah, and, and to go back to kind of what I was saying, you've got Brandon Jacobs in the backfield and a guy who they have not thrown the ball to all that often coming into this game with just four receptions. And so he tends to get lost sometimes. Eli Manning able to get the ball in his hands in a, in a big first down. Jay Ratliff comes out. Grabbing the back of his left leg. We're already 
they've been up front defensively for Dallas and Jacob started to run before he made the catch. Fox Wednesday it's the season premiere of human target. The man who will guard your life with his own is getting a little backup. If your life is on the line they're the team to call for a human target. Season premiere Wednesday at 8 Eastern 7 Central here on Fox. I'll be sure to watch it. Second and ten. Two and a half to go third quarter after that incompletion to Jacobs. Jacobs still shaking his head about dropping that last pass. Here's Jacobs. Not much and runs right up the back of Booth. Marcus DeMarcus Ware on the tackle a gain of three. Yeah and that's the type of things that DeMarcus Ware can do because he's such a fast guy coming off the edge and he runs him down from behind. And so as the play caller Kevin Gilbride you've got to know that and then have something off of it. OK well if DeMarcus Ware is going to crash hard on the backside of the running plays and run our guy down then and we've got to get Eli Manning out on some type of bootleg. Or some kind of misdirection to take advantage of it. It's third down and seven. Manning throws, hits Manningham, and a good tackle by Skandrick. It's going to be a yard shy of a first down. And the crowd's already yelling for the Giants to go for it. Yeah, that's a hard one, I think, with the way that the defense has overall struggled against Dallas. I think this is the right decision. I don't, I don't think there was much of a decision there for Tom Coughlin to make. Manningham catches that ball. He had a lot of field to work with. Could have pushed it up a little bit deeper. And then if you make the catch or you have to come back, you have enough yardage for the first down. I think that's the frustration by Eli Manning, that you complete the ball, and yet you're not deep enough for a first down. Dodge hits it. But drills it halfway into the end zone. It's just a net of 29 yards of field position. We'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world watching today's broadcast in 175 countries on AFN, the American Forces Network. We thank you for all you do, and we hope you're enjoying today's telecast. That is the Teardrop Memorial. So many men and women in the armed services that are here with us in the stadium Sunday after Veterans Day and also being joined by men and women in Afghanistan watching at Camp Leatherneck. It's first down for Dallas at the 20, up by 13. Off is to Felix Jones. He gets two. Just so you know, the last time the Giants came back from a 20 point deficit was in November of 1950 against the Baltimore Colts. Well, they it's been a long time since the Giants have had the type of offensive playmakers that they have now. And so if they were ever equipped to come back from that kind of deficit this group of players even without Steve Smith is the group that can do it. It's second and eight handoff to Felix Jones nowhere to go. Candy was the first one there. And that's how this third quarter will end with the momentum shifting to the New York sideline. It's 33 20 Dallas at the end of three the NFL on Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox station should be some ending. <laughs> Fifteen minutes left in this one and a third down for Dallas third and eleven up by thirteen points as we start the fourth quarter. Paul gets back on the right side of the football. Humanera does the same. Third and 11. Kidding in trouble. Being chased and he slides short of the first down. A punt coming from Dallas, and after the punt, we will be joined by Jimmy Johnson. 
two time Super Bowl champion head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Watch Justin Tuck right here 91 it looks like he's going to come and then he drops and he was the guy who got underneath Jason Witten because that's where Kidna wanted to go with the football and why he had to scramble good defense. Good punt by McBriar. Wow. Actually hits the official. With 14 21 left in the game and we're joined by Jimmy Johnson from the studio. How about this game Jimmy a little different tonight. <laughs> yeah it's uh, interesting. I, I think it's obvious to anybody watching the game that the Cowboys are playing with more effort and more passion than what they have the last couple of weeks. And uh, that gives them a chance because they've got talent. As Troy talked about early if you're the Giants you wanted to start fast and give the re uh, the Cowboys a reason to just say oh here we go again and, and check out of the game and that just didn't happen. No and the other thing is you know I think the, the changes that the Cowboys have made running the ball more and then on defense play, playing more zone coverage I think that's helping. First down for Eli Manning the balls at the 20. Manning is going to run and slide with a gain of eight and a half. No, Jimmy, I think you're right. You look at Dallas and the way that they've been able to maintain some balance offensively, and then on the defensive side of the ball, Paul Pascaloni, who I think has done a heck of a job. He's put together a nice game plan in not really hanging those corners out. Of course, when you lose your first two corners, you know, but he's given them some help and, and has eliminated some of the big plays. Yeah, Troy. You know, of course, the zone coverage is going to help you hide you know some of the deficiencies in the secondary but there's going to be times that those corners or the safeties are going to be isolated one on one so that man coverage is going to help them in those one on one situations. Here's Bradshaw with a carry. I, I know Troy Marvels the ball came out but he was down Troy Marvels at the production the Giants get out of Ahmad Bradshaw who's listed at five nine one ninety eight man he runs really hard doesn't he. Hey, just great effort and you know the other thing going back to the Cowboys you know by playing zone coverage it allows that secondary to go up and support the run it allows the secondary to make more plays as far as getting takeaways yeah it, it really lets everybody be active rather than chasing receivers here's Bradshaw again he's out to the 45 yard line yeah well they're doing a good job in terms of just mixing it up get getting the ball to Ahmad Bradshaw even when they're in the shotgun formation and he's lined up in the backfield you, you've got to be aware of him you know he has he leads the league coming into this game in 20 yard runs and 10 yard runs he's an explosive and powerful back 18 carries 66 yards for Bradshaw second and three. Good protection for Manning. It's Manningham on the catch. And he will, let's see how much forward progress they give him. The umpire walks in. They're going to mark him short of a first down. And uh, Joe, or I got to tell you, Joe, another catch by Mario Manningham that, you know, this shouldn't even be disputed. You know, he is short, but he's got to get past the sticks. It's not that hard to go one or two yards past the sticks so that when you complete it, you get a first down. It's third down and one. Toss to Bradshaw. And Ahmad Bradshaw has enough for a first down. Hey Jimmy I think one of the things that our that our viewers may be interested in is I know that Jason has reached out to you and, and maybe some advice that you gave him that may have been of some help to him this week. Well the thing about Jason Garrett you know he's been preparing himself for this opportunity for the last couple of years and uh, I think anybody that knows him personally uh, they're going to be pulling for him because he's intelligent. He's got a passion for the game and he is going to be extremely organized and so he's ready for this opportunity. Manning in trouble. Throws it off the body of Seibert. Penalty flags fly. Josh Brent was there pulling Manning to the ground. And we'll see what the call is but it certainly looked like Manning was well within the grasp and that play was dead. You know, Manning Joe tried and Troy. I, I, I really think you know the the change in the zone coverage has given Eli Manning a little bit of a problem not expecting to see all the zone. 
That penalty is declined on number 69. Intentional grounding, number 10. 10 yard penalty, loss of down, second out. So it's a 10 yard penalty, loss of down was well within the pocket, and it brings up second down and plenty. Well, teams that would come in offensively and game plan against the Cowboys, they, they were pretty much certain that they were going to get man coverage across the board, and so they could put in those types of routes to beat man coverage and when you're not getting the pressure on the quarterback with the front four the way that you did a year ago boy it really makes it tough on those guys on the outside. Second down and 20. The previous defensive coordinator was also. The dismissed head coach Wade Phillips. As Manning with all day down the middle drop. Hakeem Nix has been so impressive this season and in this game had a first down room to run and could not make the catch and a perfectly thrown ball here by Eli Mann and a good route on the outside by Nix and you know, he just took his eyes off the ball at the last minute you see the head go up. But had he have caught that he was past the markers for the first down. Five catches 82 yards for Nix and now it's third and 20. Steps up, throws high, what a catch! Kevin Boss. It depends on the spot. He took a hit and held on. And they're going to mark him inches short. And now the Giants will go for it on fourth down. They got a three receiver route. You're going to see Boss there, but he hooks up, which opens up a window then for Eli Manning. He steps up in the pocket. He's able to lay it over the head there of Orlando Skandrick. It's the only throw that Eli could make. And that's just a great job by Kevin Boss climbing the ladder and pulling that one in. 19 yards on third and 20. He is short. And the offense is on the field for the Giants. Well, there's no, on the previous one, you know, I agree with Tom, you had to punt that, but there's no decision to be made at this point in the game. They're measuring it only to find out exactly how much yardage they need to get to pick up this first down so that Kevin Gilbride can have a good play to call. Well it's a luxury that the Giants have with their ground game and with a combination of Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw. Right now it's Jacobs the bigger of the two in the huddle on fourth and inches. This Giants team is two for seven. On fourth down this season. It's Jacobs, and it depends on the spot. Celebrate, they think they held Brandon Jacobs short of the first down. No signal yet. And now the signal first down Dallas. It was Brady James who came up and made the hit. So the Dallas defense holds on fourth and inches. Brady James made the play, and the Cowboys up 13 take over. Decent mileage in a pickup, you don't have to order your engine up the kitty menu anymore. Say hello to variable cam timing, direct injection, and piston cooling jets. Yeah, the end of these game is sponsored by Subway Restaurants. Try the latest $5 foot long chicken marinara melt today by the Ford F 150 and its four new engines. This is the future of truck. And by Lowe's. Lowe's, let's build something together. What a play by Brady James to stop Brandon Jacobs and the Giants on fourth and inches. So now the Cowboys have it. And Felix Jones carries it over the left side for 
of three. Let's go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Pam, what happened during that power outage? Well, Joe, I've been back at the Stadium Command Center where there is fire marshals, there are stadium security, there's all kinds of people, and right now it's organized chaos. The explanation is there is no explanation. They are still digging. Down on the field, Joe, it was extremely scary. You just sort of grab the person next to you and hold on. As soon as more information comes through, I will send it up to you. All right, Pam, thanks. It's second and seven. Jimmy Johnson is still with us from Los Angeles as this Giants defense tries to make another stop. Play action. Down the field. Coverage is decent. The pass is better. Wow. And Bryan makes the catch. But there's a flag back Rushing inside the, the 40. Rushing the passer, number 71 of the defense. Penalty will be enforced from the end of the play. First down. And Bryant limps off after hitting the ground hard on the catch. Same thing we saw in the first quarter. Just one on one. Ter Terrell Thomas. Terrell Thomas is locked up with Des Bryant and he falls down and he just can't cover the guy. I mean, it's real simple. It's a ball that was a little bit underthrown, but Des Bryant's able to make the play. Here's the tail end of it that they got the flag on. I don't know that I agree with that one at all, but that one doesn't much matter after the big play down the field to Des Bryant, but. Terrell Thomas has had his hands full locking up with Des Bryant. I'm shocked that they haven't given him a little bit more help on some of these early downs. That one was good for 48 yards and a challenge by Coughlin to see if Des Bryant maintained the catch going to the ground. So we will have New York the challenge. Giants are challenging the catch at the sideline. We'll take a break when we come back. We'll talk more with Jimmy Johnson. Let's take another look. Here's a better angle. He's got it. It's time for the Bud Light playbook. Giants are challenging the catch. There's no doubt that the ball bounced and that Bryant corralled it before the ball hit the ground. The question is by the time he corralled it, was he still in bounds? Ball comes out there. He gets control of it. And the question is, is he in bounds by the time he regains possession of the ball, which never hit the ground? Well, the ball's obviously loose at that point, and then it's just a matter of once he regains possession of the ball, where is he on the field? And he's got one knee in bounds and one knee out of bounds. I think it's an incomplete pass. Here's the call from Levy. After reviewing the play, the receiver hit the ground and bobbled the ball. When he regained possession, he was out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. The passer will still be enforced from the previous spot. With the timer put on. So it's no catch. Remember the roughing the passer call against Tollison. We bring in Mike Pereira. Is that what you saw from back in Los Angeles, Mike? Exactly what I saw. It's that element of control again. He lost control of the ball, and then he never fully regained possession until he was out of bounds. Interesting. Now, you still got that roughing the passer penalty, which does go back to the previous spot, and it's enforced there. But, but he never really got control until that one knee was out of bounds. So now they're enforcing the penalty, which carries the ball inside Giants territory. And they will mark it down inside the 45, but it, the reversal eliminates the Cowboys setting up with first and goal at the three. And now the officials get together and they may have misspotted the football here. And Tom Coughlin wants an explanation. And they're going to have to go over and figure out where the ball should be. We have it as being first and 10. At the 40 after the penalty right now they've marked it inside the 44 and here are the Cowboys leaders as they try and figure out where the, the ball penalty is 15 yards from the Dallas 45 it will be first down. So it is at, at the, the 40 of the Giants 40 not where they have it right now which is just outside the 43. 
And Jimmy Johnson is still with us. I mean, every time you turn around in this game, Jimmy, something is happening. And the ground game for the Dallas Cowboys is finally a threat, and that play action has been able to work today for John Kittman. Yeah, and of course it, it opens it up for Des Bryant, and you know Des Bryant has got to be one of the finest rookies I've seen in a long time. Him and Calvin Johnson of Detroit are the two big physical, you know, receivers that uh, that any general manager would be looking for. It was Bryant who could not make the catch along the sideline. It'll bring up second and ten. You know, you look at Des Bryant in the year that he has, Jimmy. You're right. I mean, he's been awfully explosive. He's had big plays in virtually every game. He's a hard guy to get to the ground, and he doesn't give up easily. He has taken a beating physically here in his rookie season. Well, you know, besides being the great receiver, you know, he's such a great kick returner as well. I mean, he adds a lot of power to that offense. On second and ten, here's Felix Jones. And Felix ends up picking up three human euro on the tackle. Well, this is interesting right here with third down. And based on what happens here on this play as to whether or not Jason Garrett is looking at this as four down territory. Now Jonathan Goff is slow to get up. We'll take a break. Jimmy, thanks for your time this afternoon. All right. Enjoy it, guys. All right. Jimmy Johnson from the studio will take a break as they look at Jonathan Goff. In the Droid X, the next generation of Doves. A big play as Goff is now on the sideline. They continue to work on him. It's third and seven. Kenna rolls to his right. Sets up downfield. Pass is picked off by Dion Grant. That is a killer interception thrown by John Kidna into very good coverage. Yeah, it was good coverage, and Dion Grant was in great position, but yet you can understand what Kidna was thinking. I mean, when you've got the night that Des Bryant is having, put it up high. He just didn't get it quite high enough, but if you put it up high and allow Des Bryant a chance to go get it, I mean, that's a pretty good opportunity. That's a heck of a play right there by Dion Grant, being in front of Des Bryant, shielding him off, and then catching the ball off the, the deflection for the interception. That for Deion Grant, third interception of the season. His first year with the Giants. And it's a first down for New York, still eight and a half to go in a 13-point game. Out of the shotgun, Manning over the middle. Manningham makes a catch. First down, 13 yards. That's good work there by that offensive line. And Eli Manning, he's had to put the ball in some tight spaces today. You've got Andrews on DeMarcus Ware, and then he got help at the last minute. But Eli Manning is throwing some balls into some tight spaces in order to get some of these completions. Third 300 yard passing day of the season. He adds to it, gets another first down. Kevin Boss. Kevin Boss, I know when we were talking with Kevin Gilbride for last week's game, he was saying, you know, we just really haven't been able to get the ball into Boss's hands as much as we would like. Well, <laughs> they've done a good job of that tonight. That one good for 14 yards. Ahmad Bradshaw is pulled forward by Kevin Boss, who's really limping. A gain of five. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Okay, Joe, here's what we've learned about the power situation. The main line or feeder that generates power to the stadium went out at that point. The second line kicked in, and then that one went out. Now we're back to the first power source. The lights took a while to come back on because they are halogen lights. They don't know why any of it happened. Here's Nix for the touchdown. What a throw. What a catch. There's a flag down back at the 45. It's Kevin Booth guilty of a hold. A race is a 48 yard touchdown pass to Knicks. Here's Kevin Booth in there at left guard. It's against Bowen. He makes a tackle right at the end after he got beat. And what a great job there by Hakeem Nix working against McCann. Now they got the matchup they wanted. And Booth, he just got out of position with his feet. 
And that's generally when offensive linemen will hold. He didn't. He didn't not only held. He tackled him. Brings up second and 15. With 7:17 left. The Giants have been penalized now eight times. Play clock is winding down. Calhoun, the rookie, was late onto the field. Play clock is at one. And a bad snap. Manning just able to get back on it. Now it's a loose football. And the Dallas Cowboys take over. There is there's a flag down on the field. On the far side of the field of the 40. Illegal formation. Number 67 was not on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. First down Dallas. So the sloppiness has continued, and that was from the Giants late out of the huddle and late up the line. Well, there's two mistakes here. One, it's a bad snap by Rich Cyber, but then Eli Manning's got to just fall on this ball. He tried to pick it up and make a play. Now, he didn't realize that he had an, a butler right there on his back, but that's a ball you've just got to fall on if you're Eli. Let's go back to Kevin Booth. And he had his arm around the right leg. First down Dallas and it's Felix Jones over the left side. Eight of one. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. Well, the Niners and Rams keep going back and forth. A big day for Troy Smith. More than 350 yards passing, including this 16-yard touchdown to Michael Crabtree to put San Fran on top. 20 to 17 inside. Two-minute warning. Joe, Troy, Pan. All right, Kurt. Here we have seven minutes left. Clock is running. Second down and nine. Big turnover by the Giants. We lead the NFC East. Here's Felix Jones. Candy on the stop. And the timeout is taken by the Giants. Here's the turnover by Manning and the Giants. Giants with one timeout remaining as they trail by 13. Look. Jerry Jones making his first in-season head coaching change. Watching his Cowboys lead by 13 with six and a half to go. Third and eight. Marion Barber. It'll be fourth down. With a field goal, it's still a two-possession game. Albeit two touchdown, two two-point conversion game. As the field goal unit will come on for Dallas. No, that's a good job, though by New York at least holding Dallas to a field goal attempt Dallas not you know really kind of I was surprised a little bit actually looking at this and saying OK we're going to be satisfied with a field goal because as you said Joe a field goal only makes it a 16 point game yeah you got to convert on you got to score twice and then get two two point conversions but it still stays at a two possession game It'll be a 34 yard try and Jason Garrett will use Dallas's first timeout this second half. Take a look ahead next week and what's coming up on Fox and the slate of games early Packers and Vikings Redskins and Titans Lions Cowboys Cardinals Chiefs then later on Seahawks Saints Falcons and Rams Buccaneers at 49ers who are leading late at home over St. Louis that all starts with a Ford Fox NFL pregame show brought to you by the all new Ford F-150 built Ford tough it begins at noon Eastern. 9 a.m. Pacific. One timeout left for the Giants. Beeler has been anything but automatic. He's two for two in this game, which makes him 11 of 14 for the year. He had an extra point tipped and missed early in this game. Pushed wide right. <laughs> and Beeler's up and down season continues. That was a good snap, good hold. You called it, Joe. He just pushed it right. 34 yard try. 
and it's still a 13 point game. This has been one of the weirder days I would say that you and I have ever been together watching a football game and so now the Giants they're still alive down by 13 points. Yeah still alive now I mean they still got to score two touchdowns but they don't have to now convert two two point conversions. One timeout left though I mean that's going to be a challenge for them they've got to move fast they got to tie up pick up a lot of yardage. They need some big plays. Kevin Boss who was limping the last time the Giants had the ball this could be a free play. Over the middle pass is caught by Kevin Boss's replacement Travis Beckham. Marcus Ware jumped across early and seems like this one is on Dallas. Play should stand. Offside. Number 94 defense. Penalties decline. Result of the play first down. 11 yards and a first down to Beckham. And the clock will wind. Again, just one timeout remaining. They're letting the Giants get all the way set up to the ball and now wind the clock. Manning comes underneath the Bradshaw. Who takes it upfield and takes it into Dallas territory. Mont Bradshaw, good for 18. You know, he does a nice job of catching the ball, Joe, but he turns back to the inside, and because of that, he then got away from the sideline. Had he have caught the ball and stayed outside with it, he could have probably picked up the same amount of yardage and then gotten out, back, out of bounds to stop the clock. Manning pointing out protection at the line, gets rid of it, and completes. Pass is caught by Manningham, good for five yards. Eli Manning saw the blitz coming, hung in there, and got it out just in time with three rushers in his face. And now Dallas has to take a timeout defensively, which is a break for the Giants with 4.42 left. They just put two more seconds up. It's 4.44 left on the game clock. You know, the two safeties are getting into it Sensabaugh and Allen Ball. Well, there was just some confusion there when Eli Manning, after that completion, went to the line and started to make a call. Whoa. You see Sensabaugh and Newman. They went right at each other. And that little shoving match forced the Cowboys to take a timeout. Yeah, and on the other side where I was looking, there was some confusion as well. I don't know what that was about right there, but I think that. Kind of tells a lot about this team and why they came into this game at one and seven. Now Sensabaugh and Newman try and figure it out. But with 4:44 left, that was a break for the Giants to get a timeout. Second and five. Manning's in trouble. Ratliff can't bring him down. Pass is caught by Bradshaw. Who stays on his feet and has a first down at the 28? How about Manning staying up as Ratliff couldn't bring him to the ground? I think I saw that play a yeah. little version of it or a bigger version of it in the Super Bowl a few years ago. Good effort by Eli Manning, and the clock continues to run. Blitz coming. Here's Beckham. And Travis tried to get around the tackle, could not. Newman brings him down, a gain of just three. And here's that previous play, and you're going to see Eli Manning under duress and Jay Ratliff putting the pressure on him. Looked like he had him, and he keeps him alive. And it was also a nice job on the back end by Bradshaw breaking a tackle. They hand it off to Jacobs. He takes it to the 20. But again, only one timeout remaining for New York as they trail by 13. Yeah, you know, they've. they've been able to move the ball but they haven't gotten the big chunks and they've had to throw it underneath and they haven't been able to stop the clock with the exception of Dallas calling that timeout. Now it's third and two and the pass is caught by Manningham for the first down. But the clock will continue to wind the game of three to get the first down here my guess is they're going to try to get something in the end zone but they're playing right now basically obviously to get the touchdown but it's going to be an onside kick situation if they do. Because of having just the one timeout. Manning with time end zone. 
A lot of contact, no flag, and Tom Coughlin jumps off the sideline. Yeah, Three minutes left at second and ten. There was definitely contact, but this was a ball that the officials felt was uncatchable. You know, had Manningham have stayed up the field, which is what it looked like Eli Manning was anticipating, there would have been an opportunity, but he cut it short. And I, I don't think that Manningham would have had a chance at making that play. There's the drive for Manning. Three minutes left, second and ten. Manning corner of the end zone, incomplete for Manningham. It was brought down by Terrence Newman. He had a good look at that one with Mario Manningham and a good route. And, and if Eli had just driven that ball and put it outside, you're going to see there's pretty good separation right there. You've got to drive that one to the pylon. And he makes that catch, and then Newman likely pushes him out of bounds about the one or the two yard line. There's the day for Manningham, whose responsibilities were ratcheted up with the loss of Steve Smith. Out with a partially torn pack. It's third and ten. Manning fires, and it's intercepted. Allen Ball. First of his career. And that should wrap up the first head coaching win for Jason Garrett. Only one timeout remaining, trailing by 13 points. And Allen Ball picks right now for his first career interception. Well, they try to run that double move there to Manningham, and Allen Ball has seen that before. They scored on a touchdown on that play to Steve Smith going back to the last time these two teams met. Allen Ball is anticipating that. He drives on it. He's got the angle. It's just a nice play by Allen Ball. And so now the Cowboys will keep it on the ground. Eli Manning will hang his head. Allen Ball will keep the souvenir. And the Dallas Cowboys, who came in one and seven, wondering what this weekend would bring. Hand it to Marion Barber, who right up the middle picks up a first down. I know it'll be a lot easier week this week for Jason Garrett. You know, when you have some success, when you're implementing change, it's a lot easier than for the players, the ones that are kind of looking at it a little bit skeptical, to buy in and say, hey, maybe this stuff works. The game clock is a little ahead of the play clock. So the Cowboys can let it wind all the way down to the two minute warning. They have a first down. And they will leave New Meadowland Stadium two and seven. We're at the two minute warning. It's been a crazy day of football here in New Jersey. Cowboys lead it by 13, two minutes to go. Cowboys are two minutes away from their first win of the season. Marion Barber gets it, almost broke it. Brought down by Thomas, a gain of six. And let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. Another week in the NFL, another game going to overtime. Josh Brown with a 33 yarder for the Rams ties the game at 20 with San Francisco. They head to OT. Joe, Troy, Pam, that's the 13th overtime game already. This season in the NFL. Time permitting, we'll take you to the finish. All right, Kurt, thanks. Our football coverage doesn't end when the games are over. Afterward, we ask you to stick around for the OT. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Jimmy, and Michael bring you exclusive interviews, extended highlights, and a look ahead to next week's action. America's number one post game show, the OT, presented by Lowe's, coming up right after the game only on Fox. Second down and four. Movement by Doug Star, Free. Number 68, offense, five yard penalty, second out. Tom Coughlin and his Giants teams have historically gotten off to very good starts. First eight games as he's in his seventh season, there's the record, and eight games under the rest of the way. But I, you can look at those numbers, it's hard to compare year by year, and I would have expect this Giants team to bounce right back. The kind of talent they have as Barber loses a yard. Well, you would sure think so. I mean, 
this Giants team or the giant teams that have played under Tom Coughlin as you said have gotten off to great starts. But even when we were at their building on Friday I know in visiting with Tom Coughlin he wasn't I mean, he was happy with the fact that they had gotten to this point in the season but everyone knows this season's a long way from being over. And knowing that after going five and oh last year and then finishing eight and eight it's still pretty fresh on everybody's minds and they knew that coming into this game it was going to be a tough one against Cowboys. It's third down and ten. And Barber gets it again. And that'll do it. Marion Barber brought down from behind with a first down. And Troy, no matter how you look at this game, it's a monumental upset by the Dallas Cowboys. And for everybody that wanted to handicap the chances of Jason Garrett taking the interim tag away and maintaining this job past this little eight game test. Well I think the odds change you can't overstate what one game means but this is a this is a big start for a guy who had the deck this the deck really stacked against him. Well coming into this game Jerry Jones made it very clear when he announced that Jason Garrett was taken over as the interim head coach he said I want to see tangible success. Well it doesn't get more tangible than a win. And so you're right Joe this was a step in the right direction and I think it validates for Jason Garrett all of the things that he was preaching this week. Just the second win of the year. Jason Garrett is one for one. What a week it's been for him. Jason Garrett. Well done. Gets the well done message from Tom Coughlin. First interim head coach in Dallas Cowboys history on the road against a team that had won five straight with a backup quarterback. And he is standing by with Pam Oliver. Let's go down to Pam. Jason Garrett here. What helped propel your team to this convincing victory? Oh, I think the guys accepted the challenge of where we were. Um, and they worked really hard in practice this week and they carried to the ball game. It was a great challenge for us. It's an awfully good football team that we face today. They have good players and they're really, really well coached. What was your message um, to the team? I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but what was your message? Well, the, the thing that we emphasize more than anything else is trying to be great each and every day in everything that we do. And, you know, I told them uh, on Wednesday that we just need to be great on Wednesday. Let's see if we can be great on Wednesday and let's try to be great on Thursday. If we keep doing that, we'll stack some good days together and give us our, give ourselves a chance to be good on Sunday. Wade Phillips, you described him as a mentor. If he's watching this, what would your thoughts be to him? Well, my comments would be to say thank you. Say thank you. Uh, he's really a special guy and anybody who's ever been around Coach Phillips as a player, as a coach in any organization over the course of his 34 years in this league understands what I'm talking about. I was really fortunate to work for him for three and a half years and I learned so much from him on a daily basis. He's really a special guy. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Back to you, Joe. 44 year old interim head coach Jason Garrett winning here at New Meadowlands Stadium. 3320 over the Giants. We'll be back after this. The Cowboys celebrate on the road. An emotional day, I'm sure, for Jason Garrett. And we give you the seven word recap brought to you by Windows Live. Now we're going to summarize this game in seven words. Cowboys turn out the lights on Giants in their five game winning streak. For whatever you're sharing to the cloud with Windows Live to create and share anywhere. That's it from New Meadowlands Stadium. We take you to San Francisco now for an overtime game between the 49ers and the Rams. 33-20 here. Dallas wins it. Here's Sam Rosen and Tim Ryan. Cut down after training camp from the Baltimore Raven. Ravens is the man who's now at quarterback. We welcome those of you who watched the Dallas Cowboys defeat the New York Giants at the Meadowlands 33-20. Thanks for joining us. We are in overtime, tied at 20. Yeah, and here's the first touchdown by Frank Gore. It was set up by a long pass to Josh Morgan. Frank punches that one in. Watch Danny Amendola just find the little soft spot in the zone for the Rams. Touchdown. St. Louis, terrific throw. Now Steven Jackson is going to break a tackle from Deshaun Goldson. He's going to punch that one in and then Crabtree. And just a great play by Troy Smith. Buying time, buying time, delivers the ball. Crabtree comes down with it. Big, big touchdown. We've had a matchup of Heisman winning quarterbacks, and both have played great Sam Bradford and Troy Smith. 
Smith in trouble. As he was going down, he throws, and it's incomplete. And there's a flag on the play. They're getting P.I. on O.J. Otagwe. Oh, boy. That is going to put the 49ers in field goal range. Pass interference against Delaney Walker. Yeah, you see the back judge there talking number 21. Pass interference, defense number 21. The ball is placed at the spot of a foul. Oh, boy. First down. How about Troy Smith extending the play? And here it is right there. Ball's in the air. Delaney Walker stops, tries to get back to it. Otagwe run, runs right into him. And Don Carey, the back judge, saw it and threw the flag. But I'm telling you, Troy Smith extending that play, and it looked like they had him sacked. And who, his 225 pounds and his body strength came in handy right there as he was able to stay up and deliver the football and pick up a big-time penalty. They are well within the range of field goal kicker Joe Nedney at the 23. Gore and Norris in the backfield. Frank Gore slips through. Good run by Frank Gore down to the 17. Even, even better position now for the 49ers. So penalties, we talked about penalties hurting the 49ers, but 12 penalties on the Rams have taken their toll, and that pass interference penalty, a huge one. When would you try the field goal? I would just get, I would not put anything up in the air and get myself positioned for where Joe Nedney wants it in terms of the hash mark. Walker motions, kick it on third down. Frank Gore cuts it back. And he's got enough for the first down, down to the 12-yard line. Kick it, just kick it. And here comes Joe Nedney. He has had 19 game-winning field goals in his career. The nervous moments of a coach whose team has not been able to win on the road this season. For Mike Singletary, a nervous moment. His team needs a win to keep their hopes alive. This will be from 29 yards out. Andy Lee, the holder, and the kick is right through. The 49ers win. an old-fashioned NFC West battle the Rams and the 49ers they went back and forth and it ended with Joan Dedney's 29 yard field goal and the 49ers win it 23 to 20 we'll be back in San Francisco okay says Mike right but look at the guy in the mirror look at the guy in the mirror Make that commitment to yourself. Let's do that every time we do something. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a loud Cowboys on three now. One, two, three. Cowboys! Okay. Well, probably an out-of-this-world feeling for Jason Garrett. And before we get to football, just a reminder that coming up on Tuesday, 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment will release director James Cameron's Avatar, the extended collector's edition on both Blu-ray and DVD. You can see the secrets of Pandora unlocked in this highly anticipated set, perfect for the holidays. Kurt Menefee along with Terry Howie, Michael and Jimmy, and you talk about perfect, it seems, Jimmy, that Jason Garrett was the perfect prescription for what has ailed the Cowboys this year. Well, this was a one-game fix, and, and he's still got an uphill battle. You know, he's still got work to do, but this at least gives him credibility, you know, a little bit of success to go into the practices next week to help with those players, and who knows, they're a talented team. Well, I tell you what, you watch Des Bryant, if they could just have to take some of what he's taken, you can't keep up with that guy. He's really amazing. Forget about being a rookie as a player in this league, he's amazing. They had some luck today, but you make your luck. I really believe that, and preparation was their luck today. Well, the Cowboys seemed to begin to unravel a couple of weeks ago when they played Jacksonville, and as we look at our FedEx Air and Ground Award winners today to the Jacksonville quarterback, David Garrard gets the award 
for the air winner. A career-high 342 yards passing, including a Hail Mary that was batted into the hands of Mike Smith for the game-winning touchdown and the FedEx Air Award winner. On the ground, Fred Jackson from where? Raleigh. Hey, everybody's All-American. 133 yards rushing as the Bills get their first win of the season. Back with more after this. Okay. It's kind of car. The win here, folks. <laughs> Dallas is at home hosting the Detroit Lions, then the Thanksgiving Day game. What if they get on a roll, huh? What if they get on a roll and the Giants have to travel to Philadelphia and they could easily lose that football game? I'm not. I'm going to be the first to say it, even though I picked them to lose. But what if Dallas is nine and seven, fellas? I'm telling you, they're in the playoffs. Well, as good as you are at predictions and picking games, Dallas is going. Don't say that. No, I should say that. You know. You know. The thing is, as Troy mentioned in the lead into the game, Jason Garrett's been preparing for this moment for his entire football career, and I, hats off to Jason Garrett. Hats off for Jerry for picking Jason Garrett as the heir apparent to, to be his head coach. And what a remarkable job. Inherits a 1-7 and seven football team and three days turned around an attitude and got it done today. Well, you know, I look at this team and I think about Jerry Jones, a lot of thing about taking over as GM and getting rid of it. Pretty impressive. You can see what talent he did put on that team. I think we'll have a lot more to say about the Cowboys next Sunday when we see you on the pregame show beginning at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Enjoy your week, folks. <laughs>